Um, first, before we get started, I just want to remind anybody that uh, make sure that you sign in at the sign in table. Big turnout tonight, so I just want to make sure we catch everybody's names. Um, and then, um, either during public comment um, period or when we're going through the town meeting budget, just make sure that um, if you want to be uh, heard, just raise your hand and then say your name for the, for the record and make sure that all this is there accordingly. So first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Anybody have any additions to the agenda? That liquor license I gave you. Yeah, so under, um, so Lisa, we have the Champlain Farms liquor license. Yeah. Uh, to approve there, we're also gonna add Sanborn uh, okay. license as well. So just yeah, so we'll be doing two licenses instead of one. Chris? Yes. A couple of things to go over on the Champlain Farms license. Yeah. Um, I think we can just include it either at, uh, at the beginning of the budget session or at the end, okay. you know, whatever is convenient. I think everybody, is that good? Yeah. Everybody? Yeah. Just a quick question, is the Sanborn liquor license also a second class? Does mm -hmm. that matter? No, I don't, I don't, no, no, I don't believe it is. Okay. No. Okay. And so is the top. Anything else to be added or amended? I move to accept the agenda as amended. Second. Okay, all in favor? Yeah. Public comment inquiry. If there's anything that's not on the agenda for this evening that anybody would like to bring up, now is the time to do it. Nothing, Doug? Not yet. No? <laughs> on to the budget information portion of for the town meeting. Um, I'll just kind of run through. I guess what I'll do first is um, I'll, I'll just kind of give an over, overview of the, the budget and how we put it together. And then we'll go through the, not each line item, but we'll go through each department. Um, and I'll just kind of go over any if there are any changes one way or the other, um, a quick explanation of what those changes might have been. And uh, I'd like to get through through all the departments before we take questions, and then we can take questions and come back on them for anybody. But sometimes as we get going, some of the questions get answered um, at other departments. So. so we will get started. So, it, you know, the, again, the idea with the, the town budget, and we've talked about it the last couple of years, is, um, you know, we, we recognized a few years back that, that um, uh, there were several ticket items in the town that, um, that we were struggling with that had been uh, not well cared for in the past, and trying to future budget as well as take care of any of our, our past skeletons. Um, we tried to formulate some sort of gradual increase rather than a steep curve um, to um, to take care of some of these. So we we've, we've had this we've had this idea of about a three percent raise is kind of what we've been looking for here over the last couple of years to get to that um, to get to that section where we believe that we have the ample revenue to uh, run the town properly. Um, this this spring we. It was a little more difficult because we had the spring flood, um, which um, everybody saw in the town meeting report. You know, it was in around a million dollars of work that we completed this year, um, of which there's an ERAP amount that we have to pay, which um, which is about 12 and a half percent of that, um, as well as we have some uh, FEMA uh, projects that will be carried over for this coming spring and summer that have been in the works um, that didn't get done. So um, you'll see in this budget, uh, normally when you have an a, a, uh, emergency event like that, you have two years to, to retire 
your deficit, um, in this case, to retire the ERAP uh, percentage that you have to come up with. So rather than waiting two years, or rather than uh, financing the debt, we decided to pay the debt in the budget this year knowing that we have more to come for next year. So when we get going, we'll show you what that, that number is. Um, so quickly, um, we'll just start off with the revenues. Um, Revenue-wise, um, the local <coughs> revenues, um, we project would be up $39,000 over year over. The majority of that, um, the majority of the revenue changes come come in and around the property tax um, end of things. Um, we've been, um, we've been kind of, the delinquent taxes, because we had a huge amount of delinquent taxes in the town. So what we've been trying to do is to budget less revenue each year for the delinquency taxes. Um, but we've also, there's been an average of penalties and interest that we've been collecting off those taxes over the last couple of years. Um, so we have kind of a more stronger three-year type average number. Um, so moving moving down to delinquent taxes but increasing some of the penalties and interest is a majority of the revenue changes that we have in our budget. Um, so the revenue total up 39,000. Do you have anything you want to add to that, no. Therese, or? No. Um, you know, a majority of those Revenues really don't change a whole lot. Um, we've had some success at the <clears throat> the rec area. It's not a not a large change based on a you know a two million dollar budget, but you know we budgeted another two thousand dollars in increased fees for the recreation part next year. Um, but majority of it was at the the tax collection and everything. The getting into the cost, any things, uh, starting off with public works. The, uh, the biggest uh, change in the public works personnel end of things was um, we had uh, one individual retire and uh, it's been decided that we're gonna carry a seasonal position but not a full-time position. Um, so I guess instead of saying um, in and around, we have one half of a position less now. Uh, we're carrying a um, we're carrying a seasonal position to do plowing in the wintertime, um, which is, um, you know, there's no benefits paid out to that person. And then in the spring, summer, and fall, we'll have a half a person less on the payroll. So that's kind of the, the, main, the main piece there. Uh, Town-owned equipment. Uh, we've budgeted a slight increase there, $10,000 in the round. The majority of that is really just uh, on two items, one is repairs, um, and the second item is, is the diesel cost um, anticipation for this year of, of increasing. So, hired services. So we've we've changed this a couple of years ago in the budget. We went we had. Um, you know, roadside mowing and a few others that we were doing hired services. Uh, the previous town manager wanted to bring that in-house to do it. Uh, again, we're going to move it from in-house to out, outside again. Um, so there's, we budgeted uh, $9,000 for roadside mowing. There's, there's a couple items in here that, again, trying to get into the futuristic end of things um, of items in the town that have been uh, not as well maintained in the past, like ditching, um, tree cutting, uh, sweeping. Um, so we're going to bring those back, well, making some of those as new ones uh, to try to get a ditching program so that we can, every year we can do either so many miles or, or certain projects, um, as we found out with the, the spring flood event. Um, there's a lot of our, our roads that could use extra ditching or materials for with those ditches. The, um, so we're bringing back some of that with the hired services. Um, and the material wise, we've, um, we had probably peaked our budget with the materials there on last year's budget. Um, a lot of that was kind of in, 
uh, was kind of based upon the, the budget cycle that we we're going through and, and the way in which we were applying materials to our roads. So we've changed some things around with the materials. Overall, the materials were down 20,000 from last year's budget. Uh, majority of that is salt. Uh, we've decreased the amount of salt that we're using on our roads. But we've also, at the same time, we've increased our sand budget to make up for some of that salt. And then we've increased our gravel budget by $9,000 to, um, to get back into a good um, five-year cycle on doing our gravel roads in town. So those were the, the main. And you'll see the item in there for the ERAP. So the ERAP 12.5% piece that, um, that we're responsible for this year is, is $118,000. So, you know, and, and save that little piece for as we get going on the budget. But $118,000, if that spring event didn't happen, that, that $118,000 is six cents on your tax rate. So that's, that's a big chunk of money. Um, the other public, uh, other public works, um, really uh, not much has changed there. Other, what you will see is, uh, based on the schedule of payments for certain pieces of equipment, um, the highway trust fund will still have its, its allotted money, but there are no payments for two of those pieces of equipment for this coming budget. Um, and that was kind of included into the uh, capital plan of replacements, uh, but we'll, in this current budget, we'll be working on probably be getting a new, be working on a new truck. We don't know yet. They, but we're hoping the equipment committee is going to meet the first week in March and sort out some stuff. So even though there's no payments in our in our overall capital capital equipment fund, um, you know, in order to keep our equipment fund whole over the course of what was the average on it? Was it eight year replacements of those well, trucks? Uh, yeah, but because they bought two in one year, that's kind of goofed us up. So we're going to have the equipment committee meet the first week in March, say this is what we have, this is what's wrong with every piece of equipment, this is the age, this is how much money we have, so what are we going to do? And um, so I've had some ongoing conversations with some of the members and hopefully we'll sort that out and have a better, more definitive equipment schedule in the future town. There was also uh, some added work for the cemeteries. Uh, we have uh, some fence repair to do at the Fairview Cemetery, as well as some uh, wall repair to do at the Cherry Hill Cemetery. I know the Cherry Hill one has been kind of ongoing for some time now. Um, but we've allotted uh, money in there to do those repairs. So that's um, the end of public works. Fire department wise, um, not really a, a whole lot of changes in the fire department um, over last year. The um, same with the constables department. Kind of slight changes in the constables department. Uh, one, we added some uniform money. Um, <coughs> But not really much change there. The recreation department uh, budgeted a little bit more for uh, for some wages. Um, you'll see that the wages, the wage increase, is pretty much offset by the added revenue increase. Um, uh, parks and public places. Um, some things were moved around a little bit here. Um, we moved some wages. Um, we moved some extra wages to the pu uh, parks and public places for um, that comes out of the PW budget. Yeah, just try um, to do a better allocation of actual hours worked versus and, and um, try to shift a little bit um, to make sure it makes sense that the hours being allocated for parks was accurate as was public works as was water. So we're able to tweak that a little bit this year. Um, and the other thing that we added here was increase the um, budget for the landscaping. There was, so the landscaping throughout the town, especially um, the garden um, down at the three-way intersection um, for many years has been mostly volunteer, um, donated, um, and 
and uh, that, you know, saw that last year there really wasn't a whole lot that was done. Um, but we do have some uh, citizens in the town that are willing to, to help with some donation time. Um, so they've, they've done a smaller match uh, to the money that we put in here. Uh, but we budgeted uh, budget up $2,500 to kind of maintain the green spaces that we have throughout the town. It won't be 100% funded by the town, but it'll be a larger percentage funded by the town than it had been in the past. Um, so that was the biggest change there. Municipal office, you'll see that for the most part, it's, we'll say it's one less person in the office. It's probably, you know, if we were at the school system, it's probably like a, you know, 0. 0.6 or something like that. But we're, um, um, so we have one position that we didn't, Hire back, um, but then uh, Dietrich has has kind of a modified position from the um, from rec and doing some uh, finance and work. doing some finance and stuff in the, the public um, in the municipal office. So instead of hiring a full time person, that we were able to kind of uh, keep keep someone busy that we have locally. Um, so that's most of the um, the changes there. And of course, anytime there's one less person, there's one less person to pay for health care and, and, and all the other trickle down pieces. The uh, town halls, you know, slight slight decrease from last year. Uh, some of that's just really um, last year we did the uh, the steeple repair. Uh, town officials we were going to vote in an increase of money there for all of us, but we decided we didn't. <laughs> you decided we didn't. <laughs> so, um, so that basically it's flat. Other than the only increase, I think was the um, was it the FICA money or something. Um, uh, the listers, you'll see the listers is up percentage-wise. It's you know it says forty-seven percent, but it's really at ten thousand dollars. The reason behind that is. So we have, we currently have three listers, and up until doing the budget here, um, two two of the three listers, one, one's new, and the other two would like to. Well, one already resigned. One resigned, and the other one wanted to resign, but has now decided to stay on at least Maybe temporarily. So uh, we we put some money aside in there in case we have to have any type of um, uh, auditor services externally. Um, to cover to cover potentially not having three listers or um, so there's been some money that's been set aside in that just in case we need it the government operations hasn't changed a whole lot other than we added a little bit extra to the auditing services because now that we um, had the ERAP money that will be extra audited pieces that We'll have to pay for. I believe that we might get reimbursed some of that through. I guess not. I through out. FEMA, maybe. But you know, guess. when you take on a million dollars worth of FEMA um, accounting, then you, it's a little extra audit. That goes yeah, a lot. it's like five thousand dollars more. I'm not sure this number is going to quite cover it, but I am. I have been talking to FEMA and, and um, Federal Highways to see if we can get any of the single audit that we're going to be required to have paid for. But I'm not sure. In the past, we, in the past, you know, we've never changed. Like when we had the large Irene event years ago, I was looking back, and there was never any audited changes. You know, even though we found out years down the road that it cost us like three times the amount to audit. You know, mm -hmm. I can't remember what the, how much money we had for for that period, but you know, um, it takes a lot longer. The other piece is we added uh, five thousand dollars to the capital improvement reserve fund of which some of that money will be used right now into um, doing some uh, engineering, exploring at the, at the current uh, town uh, highway department to see, you know, can we build something there next or not. Um, and, um, you know, that's going to be, going to be one of the bigger ticket items that we'll be carrying over for this year to look at will be, you know, the public works building, what we're going to do with that. And this is kind of the first phase of doing some exploration over there, higher rural engineering to see can we build something in the same footprint or how big of a footprint can we build? Do yeah. we have to use over the air? Right, Thank we can look at the soil, do some soil borings and see what we got. Um, appropriations.
stations, um, human services slight increase. Um, other than those, I'm nothing more big for those. The White River Valley Ambulance um, has gone down from last year. It's kind of tricky with their budget because ours is on, um, you know, ours is on a July 1 to June 30th, and theirs is on a, a January to December. Um, so we've had some years where we didn't quite budget enough and, they, and didn't catch their increases, and we've had some years where we budgeted too much. And, um, so this is, this time, Therese was able to get a little better picture of what their true increase or not will be. So um, looks like we'll have a little savings there. Um, and then everything else is pretty much even. So then uh, just kind of for anybody that hasn't added it all up, uh, the net revenue increase um, from the first part of the budget is $39,000. The, the net cost increase of the budget is $94,544. So once you offset the revenue with the cost, it's a net increase of $55,544 in this budget. Uh, and a couple of things I just want to point out is based on the budget as it is right now with the $55,544 net increase, that's 2.8 cents on the tax rate. Uh, but you also have to understand that of that um, $118,000 of ERAP um, responsibilities has been paid for in this budget. So I guess you could look at it if the spring flood didn't happen, um, which is about six cents, then you know, could the budget have been three cents lighter, you know, um, um, type of deal. So um, the tricky thing was one, uh, trying to be responsible for our ERAP uh, obligations without having to retire into some sort of long-term debt um, and try to keep going forward with futuristic projects for the town, um, try not to lose the um, uh, momentum that we have in the town and try to keep it as affordable as possible is kind of the, the thinking behind the budget. So, so, so there will be more ERAP next year. Too, because yeah. the ERAP that this wasn't calculated on would be the final or the final Pinello final Bridge, Pinello Bridge, the Key Vine slide. Um, so those are some pending items. I just put the RFP out today for the hydraulic study. So there'll be some more of the twelve and a half percent on other stuff that we haven't included in that number yet. So we don't it. anticipate it to be as high as it was this year. Um, so. It all depends on that final bridge, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> but no, our hope is certainly not. Does anybody on the board have anything to add to the budget at this time for mm -hmm. opening it up to any questions that people may have? Okay, do you have any questions? some of the costs out if you subtract out uh, some savings and wages, health insurance, that, that brings it down. But then under town building equipment, you're adding back in for telephone, uh, gas, oil, and grease, and diesel. Now, if we're going to subcontract some of this work out, aren't these people using their own equipment, and why would we have an increase? and diesel and so forth. So I estimated the increase in diesel only because it seemed like our bills were getting higher. So I didn't take into consideration that, you're right, about about the fact that we were going to put out roadside mowing and, and that. So that's a good point. I didn't, that, I didn't think about that when I was coming up with that. I just seen some things about the cost of diesel possibly increasing. And there's always this 
hesitation there. And so I know obviously the good thing about diesel is that's where the fire department gets their fuel from us, so does the constable, which is gas, but we bill them back for that. So I figured if I was a little bit high, then I was a little bit high, but I didn't take any out pollution. So that's, I didn't think about that when we we're putting um, higher services out. Um, we also, you know, you also got to think, yeah. you know, when we're doing the budget too, cause it's always, you know, a couple Eight, months behind, you know, 18 behind, months out, yeah. you know, so when we started putting this budget together in, in September, October, you know, we had, you know, the embassy in Iraq just got attacked and, you know, there, you know, we saw a little bit of a fluctuation at the pumps here and it, we had to build the budget at that point, you know, to go to print. Um, so it, I think there's some opportunity there as long yeah. as something doesn't happen in the world right. economy. Yeah. Seems like right now because of the coronavirus and everything else that's going around that's going to push some of those commodities down for a while. But when we went, built this budget, that wasn't really known at that point. So there could be yeah, some opportunities. Yeah, the excess there. for hired services and this attracting some of these other savings. It looks to me like it's still going to cost us about $29,000 more. Well, one of the things in here is, so obviously we're outsourcing the roadside mowing. That was a big bone of contention last year. People were really unhappy. Um, we had borrowed the roadside mower, which was very kind of another town to allow us to use. But with that came some caveats. You can only make one pass. There was only certain things you couldn't do. And by not replacing someone full time, that means that ties up two people for you know a month, almost three weeks to a month. So it kind of makes it a little less efficient. So there was that. The other thing is there is one project in hired services. So you can see that it got increased from 1,000 to 20,000 on some contract work. That's gonna be a one-shot deal, which is gonna be this year. So there was, um, so that is not an item on the hired services that's gonna continue to be that high. Um, the other thing we had in there too was livery stable and Avon storm drains. That's $15,000. So what we had tried to do was because we were doing the big road project was this 2.8 million that we're going to do, you know, for the water line. We were trying to build in the Avon and livery stable storm drains, try to take advantage of the fact, as you know, they were mobilized and things like that, but the cost was too high. So in this case, um, it was actually Tim Mills who came up with it. It was a good idea. He said, look, why don't we pay for the engineering of those projects? We couldn't do the construction because it was another couple hundred thousand dollars but every once in a while there's grant money two rivers had applied for something it didn't pan out but they might be able to get it in another couple of years or let me know about it so we're thinking if we could get it engineered then we would have a shovel ready project so when that grant money became available again we could do those things so that's also a one-shot deal in here too is right. to try to get those in there but we looked at it we had it in on the budget discussions we've talked about it several times about trying to figure out how we could come up with the money to pay for the storm drains additions while the roads were open and it was it was a big knot on top of the ERAF. So, so like, that's why we didn't So there's thirty five thousand dollars there of one time projects for yeah. just this coming season. Yeah. How often do you mow the roadside once or twice? Once. Okay. Yeah. And, and again, like Teresa had said, it was, you know, it was really nice of one of our neighbors to allow us to use the piece of equipment, but it also came with strings of, you know, we felt that we couldn't do the proper mowing that we would like to do. We also had to do it in the non-favorable time. Um, and the work that was done, not, not really because of our work crew, but just because of only being able to do one pass. And, you know, it was kind of not done you know, as formal as we'd like it to be done. Um, and then as going going away and taking that one person back out of public works for the summer, it, it, you know, it's gonna be one less person, person. to do work. Right. So it just made sense to hire that back out again. Um, the other thing we did in here too was add ditching, <clears throat> which we really, was added ditching, contracting it out. It's a bigger machine and they can go out and then we can bid it by the foot. It's just gonna be easier. We did look at the option of leasing a machine, but by the time we lease the machine, get one of our guys used to using it, we're kind of a little bit losing some of the progress we could make. So, and especially after the flooding, and there's still as anybody, I can see Joe Russo over there knows, we need some more ditching work done. So by putting it out and bidding it out by the foot, it's, I think it's something that's gonna gain us some momentum in the town, at least, for certainly on the road. Well, I've often thought it would be a good idea to look into subcontracting some of this stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not against it, but you know, as long as it doesn't end up costing us more than just 
percent yeah. worse than next year. Right. Yeah. Right yeah. Yeah. Plus, too, it's always good for us because it transfers the liability. So it's yeah. you know, as you know, so. Under materials that uh, ERAP, yeah. if we amortized that for three years, we would have practically no increase in taxes. Right, but we have to pay it within two. Oh, you have to pay it within two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's FEMA yeah. retirement. We've got to eat it within, we have to pay within two. Just like that final Pinello Bridge, we have to have it done within two years or they won't give us, reimburse us for the temporary bridge or the final bridge. So there is a time frame there. So, yeah. And then you would also, you know, take on some interest that would be a, a part of that as well. So. Yeah, because we have to get. And the interest is. So low. I know. Well, they're they're creeping up. Yeah. I mean, they're not. It is. It's just, and then you know, what always gets me, Lucian, is we're still holding that that one point four million dollar, you know, and so it always. Yeah. And we, uh, and we did, you know, and the board, we did talk about it several times on on uh, the different versions of the budget on, you know, do we, do we just retire it? Do we take a chance and uh, put it out for two years? Right. But knowing that we were gonna have another ERAF piece coming this year, that we felt that it was most responsible for us to retire it this year while we could, um, rather than take on a payment for this coming year and then having another one that we would, you know, maybe have to take on a payment. Plus we got, you know, the water bond coming. So, you know, yeah. we got, There'll be an increase in water services, so we we're right. just trying to be as most responsible as we could with yeah. retirement. Because we also had to take, we borrowed money, we had to do a line of credit to keep us so we could pay the contractors. So mm -hmm. I have like a five, just I have right now, I think five thousand bucks, probably seven by the time we pay an interest on a line of credit that we needed to use to get the FEMA work done. And, and uh, so it's a, you know, it's one of those things. It's, I mean, I, I will say numbers. that, um, you know. To Teresa's credit, that you know, it was it was the spring flood event was smaller than it was Irene. However, it was managed a lot better than it, you know than the town prior to. Um, you know, we already received the <coughs> money for the um, federal oh, highway piece, yeah. which was the the um, uh, camp road that was all done through federal highway, so that was 100% um, funded. And then, you know, Teresa's done a good job of putting together all the other uh, work that comes under the FEMA umbrella. Um, you know, I mean, we, I think we all saw um, when we had Irene there, there was, you know, we retired a very large debt there a couple of years ago because of, you know, how that was managed. And I would say right now that we feel very confident on, um, <clears throat> one, that all the projects have been put, put to yep. bed. Yep. Uh, we know that payment is coming and we have our finger on the pulse. And, and at this point, we're just trying to be responsible and take care of the debt that, that we do have, so. Yeah, yeah. we met with the, met the FEMA person every week, Chris and I did some more of the final work, and she's um, putting finishing touches on our last project to be submitted. The only money we've got back so far was Federal Highways. We did get back some on the um, debris the removal under the line stuff, of yeah. bridge, but so, and plus we have an agreement with Mascoma because they were unhappy about the Irene situation that when we borrowed money as a line of credit this time, as soon as we get money back, we pay them. So I just made, you know, we just made a large principal payment because we got the federal highways money back and then that bridge um, debris removal. So we gave that money right to them, right back. So trying to, you know, so I just, we just made a large chunk. We drew 750,000 and we just made a 100 and some odd thousand dollar payment to the principal. So um, trying to be responsible about keeping that under wraps. I have another comment <coughs> on government operations. I was going through this and it didn't seem to add up right. So I have three times gone through the line items for this uh, particular budget. And I, I come up with $125,925 instead of $140,425. Okay, all right, I'll have to, I don't have my original spreadsheet. What's your number, Lucian? One what? I come up with 125,925. All right, I'll look at my, I have the original spreadsheet on my computer. I'll have to look. I'm That's looking. for government operations. Yep. Okay. So I don't know, unless I had a formula wrong or something's hidden that I don't see here. So I will look, but thank you, because we can make that correction. And then the next one, appropriations, which is local human services, and the ambulance. 
I come up with 161,838. All right. Not 164,903. Okay. I'll look there too. I don't know. I mean, I'm using Excel, so I don't know if I added something. But so thanks. That would be a nice savings of 17,500. Yes. I went over it times. Well, I'm sure you did. That's good. Well, I'm glad someone's doing it because. Uh, what was that number again, Motion? 161. Right? For uh, three, 161, 831, 838. So I can look and see because I noticed something earlier got a portion of it got hidden. The number was there, but the description was gone. So I will look and see. But that's okay. thank you. Hopefully, I don't find anything on there. And your number is good. <laughs> so. Hopefully, I'm right. I hope so. Lucian. I'll and, look. And I have one more pet peeve, and then I'll be done. Under the recreation facility improvement fund. We keep putting money into that fund year after year after year. It never gets spent. It just sits there <laughs> and tired of taking our money and putting it in that slush fund, and then it just sits there. Plus, I think there's a mistake for 2020-21. On page 54, you have an annual appropriation for 15000 but in the recreation budget, I think it's over 10,000. Okay. All right. And I wish we would just stop flushing money into that slush fund until they start to spend it. And I think, didn't the board at some point uh, put a cap on how much they could spend on the skateboard park with their 50,000? Yeah. So. So now they haven't, so they haven't even spent that yet. And if they, if they get the $10,000, Appropriation this year, they'll have a hundred. They'll, uh, they'll have one hundred and twenty-one thousand. Well, Just sitting there year after year. So it, it and we're well, we are working with them to to move forward with the master plan. There. So um, you know, the, as we all know, that there is a master plan for the the entire recreation site. Uh, and you know some pieces have have gone forward with it, and then the skateboard park has kind of been the stalled. Um, there, there has been directive, and we're going to be meeting with them right after this piece um, this evening. Um, so out of that money right now, you know we have to keep funding it because as soon as as soon as the skateboard park goes through or doesn't go through, you know we do have. You know, there's basketball and tennis, and there are other pieces to that plan that we need to. Again, we're trying to keep the bell curve of funding because we wouldn't want to just cut it off and say no funding this year, and then ask for twenty thousand next year. You know, double it or something um, to get to the whatever basketball court, tennis court, whatever is going to go in there. So, uh, of that, once this money goes in, of that hundred and twenty thousand in the fund, fifty of it is is earmarked for the skateboard park. Um, so they, they do have a budget not to exceed. Um, so, so there is not, a, there's not a, oh, hold on. Nope. Uh, I got it. So there is not another line item in the whole budget that's treated this way. Every other line item in the budget in the budget is an estimated expenditure for this coming year. And that's the only thing that is not treated that way. Well, I mean, we our goal is to motivate the recreation committee to to move a shovel-ready project forward, if that's a skateboard park or something else. Because um, there, you know, as we all know, there's there's more than just that there. You know, there's um, there there are other projects to do there as well as last year. Um, some of the trail systems were were done, <coughs> um, and then just to touch base on, there was a difference between. Ten thousand in the budget and fifteen thousand, I think that was put into the um, the fund page. Oh, I can see it. Yeah, he's right. But that was the difference of that funding the trails or not. Remember? No, no. That what he's saying is it was my mistake. I when we got the number from the rec fund, I changed it in the budget and in the other line, but I didn't go didn't, back and didn't change do it in the fund. Plan. Yeah. But yeah, I think there's some of that money in there. Like for example. This like we gave them fifty thousand for the skate park, but they had set over seven thousand of that as donations that they had raised, or there's a grant and things like that. So some of the money in that overall fund is donations that they raised specifically for that project, or 
donations that were raised specifically for the skate park or for the trails or so. Um, but yeah, there is quite a bit of money sitting in there. You're right. Um, my question has, that I was going to bring forth is, is to that effect that he's asking. What's the question? Here, my, my question I was, uh, that I mentioned, I wanted a, a question on the town budget, and it relates to his question. May I ask it? Well, I mean, we were going to talk about the recreation piece. Okay, but it has to do with piece. The, after. Okay. So um, it, it's related to his question. Okay. All right. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. And, and the tough thing with these, um, you know, these capital funds, you know, if that's either buildings or, or if it's recreation or if it's equipment or, you know, because we have all those other future planning funds is, you know, the idea of those funds is to not get us into the short term thinking of, okay, we don't need anything this year, but then we need 40,000 next year, you know, and have those peaks and valleys. So we're trying to do that bell curve. And um, so the, the right idea is to continue to fund the recreation department the way we have been doing it. But we, you know, we do need to get some projects out um, and done. And, and we, we do understand and we are working on that. So, um, but we also did talk about, you know, funding it or not funding it this year. Um, we decided to continue to fund it with the way we have so that the other projects wouldn't get delayed, you know. Um, so that was kind of the, <coughs> decision there. Mm -hmm. Anything else budget-wise? Is there anything going into the reappraisal fund this year? I couldn't see anything that I missed. Is it under listers? I can't remember where it is. Um, I did last year. I wonder if I didn't do it. I can't remember where it was last year. Um, you know what? Last year, how did we do it last year? Let me find it. Was it a I can't remember. I'm trying to think of it in my head where we did it last year because we, I remember voting on it and funding it in the town warning and then remember and you put it under listers. I don't see it in the lister. But I would have had to put a number in there for last year. I'm looking. I don't see it either. I don't see it. <coughs> what I don't see is even the description, like under um, the name, which is odd because there should be a I know one discussion we did have in I regards to the I would paid it out of though. Mm -hmm. If it was under government operations, maybe that's why government operations is wrong. I wonder if it's under there. Like, I hit the under with the line got hit, but the number is still added in. We, we definitely the, discussed it. Yeah. And I, yeah. My yeah. recollection is we kept it in. I think so, too, because we weren't doing well, At one point, we actually... We were talking about not... Yeah, we were talking it. about not doing and We also it. talked about increasing it. Right. Yeah, but then uh, we didn't... But we were I never, we were never we, going to be able to come up with enough money. To, so maybe we didn't put money in it. I will have to go back and look at my notes, but that's a good question. Um, Rick, because they, we did talk about funding it, and then we talked about not funding it because we were so close to have to have one that we were going to have to come up with money anyway. So I will have to look because I don't see it here. So I'll look. Yeah, we did. We did have a discussion because we. And are, I feel like we said you weren't going to fund it because we were so close that it wasn't really worth putting you know, the money in. Right now we're within. I'll make a note. Look. You know, realistically, here. two, two years of doing this and. The reappraisal fund didn't even start. Well, there's always kind of a money from the state that comes in, but the town had never set aside any any local money until last year. Right. And we we started off with five thousand uh, dollars. You know, last year was kind of a tight budget as well. Um, but right now we're looking at. I mean, shooting from the hip. You know, we probably need eighty eighty to one hundred thousand dollars in matching funds for that reappraisal. And adding another five thousand this year is not gonna get us close. So I, I know we talked about I that. I feel like we took it out um, that we didn't we do it because we were gonna. But I'll have to double check with that. I think with some of the other products that we ended up um, yeah, moving forward to fund it for five thousand dollars this year really isn't gonna get you 
very far ahead because at this point we're just going to end up probably having to add half of it next year. And well, what we figured is we have enough money to start. <coughs> so you know, if you got put on a two-year contract, two-year cycle, we have money saved so we could start making those payments, and then we have to move into it that way because we weren't going to have enough. And you know that's looming. So I think that they decided not to fund mm -hmm. it. But I, would I mean, and that looks like one of those that you know going forward because you're you know you do a town-wide appraisal well should was uh, every 12 years so, something like that so i think going forward you know if the town's piece of it is a let's say a hundred thousand dollars we probably got to work on a ten thousand dollar a year you know reappraisal money that goes into a fund and you know this time around we were on the back end of this uh, that you're never going to catch up uh, i think it was good to start the fund because you know that, those are the things we're trying to to limit are those you know sudden increases in the budget but I think this one's going to be one that we're not going to be able to avoid unfortunately yeah because it's already it's in here listed but yeah because we have one hundred forty eight thousand six hundred forty seven dollars in there now so yeah I think that was the case so I think we just that you decide not to fund it but I'll double check any other Budget information. Feel free, throw it out there. I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know if this would be in the budget or not the fourth of call works and stuff. We got down to a ten thousand for the call works. Now is that gonna be individually purchased as needed? Or we're gonna purchase the call works all at one time with that ten thousand? I'm not sure. The size and stuff that you need. Yeah, I'm sure you probably will do that. I mean, the Bethel Mills is good. They honor the state pricing, the state contract. We get the state contract yeah. price from Bethel Mills, just by how many we buy. I know there's a couple places that we have noted that need to be replaced, but so I think, yeah, he's probably going to buy them as he needs them because if he bought them in bulk and had the right size, I think it'd be a problem. But, um, but since Bethel Mills all honors the state contract pricing, I'm not sure there'd be any savings if we bought a bunch up front. No, I was just kind of curious about that for us. Uh, recently, I asked for some codes. There's some codes that definitely need to be replaced that haven't been replaced in three to four years. They're about. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, so it's <laughs> some, some that needs to be done. You're right. There's a bunch. There absolutely is. I was looking at the, if you go online, you can go to BT Culverts, and it has our whole culvert inventory because um, now that Chris and I have gone through and done all the FEMA stuff, I'm going to go in and update so you can see what's there. We found some culverts doing after the April flood that we didn't even realize that we had that were found and were so plugged. So um, definitely the push this year is to, yes, replace some culverts for sure and to get all the culverts cleaned out so the water's flowing the way it needs to. But So I know we have a couple um, on a list that um, are going to be updated. And also on the, uh, the contractors that we plan to bid on stuff for ditching and stuff, now, we're not going to use those contractors because we have done this before. We're not going to use those contractors to install culverts if, if we need it, although they may be working on that road or something like that, to have them replace those culverts because I was told once before by one of the contractors that to replace a culvert is cost just as much for them to do it as we would do it. Yeah. I mean, the idea at this point is to, to do the hired services for equipment that we don't currently have right um so really would be the ditching end of things i mean i, I don't want to i don't want to say no that they would put a culvert in if it made sense you know if they were ditching here and there was a culvert there and it just made sense to put it in but but the intent is to keep those separate that you know that we would do the culverts in-house for the most part and then we would just take advantage of you know them having a an excavator to do ditching more efficiently than we can so and I got, <clears throat> this is the one for turning on the pea vine. Um, it's just that you come out of, um, I get, um, I think it's the Ford's place and you go down, straight down, then there's this metal culvert that's got the barrels and stuff through there. So, uh, what's, do we have a plan? Hmm? Right across from the yeah, right across from the fish hatchery. Is that culvert, the funds are going to be to help replace that culvert or are we waiting on Something from FEMA still, or is that the culvert that um, has the had um, like the granite curbing right. that was out there? 
So yeah, that culvert isn't going to be replaced because when they came out and looked at it, they said there was nothing wrong with the culvert. All it said was, we just need to put some more stone there for the outfall. So that, and there's already, uh, they either picked it up or there was some granite, you know, basically granite curbing for lack of a better description there. So we're not going to replace that culvert. They said it was fine. We just need to put some more outfall, some more stone to break the outfall when it comes out. So if the other side needs to be ditched a little, um, we could take care of that in house. But that's what I was told was that the culvert was fine, no need, and that if anything, they just need to put some more stone there yeah. before, before it goes the river. But, right. but if you find some culverts, let me know <clears throat> that you you know that you think that need to be replaced. Let me know, and I'll happily put them on the list. Okay. It's Thank a you. it's a challenging area because that bank keeps getting eroded, you know, from from yeah, the bank. Put those that it can be done, but like I said, we don't have that equipment to place yeah. that stone in about rolling it down into the river itself. Yeah. So I know it's a difficult task to do, but I'm just kind of curious because it's been a going in the matter for a couple of years now. So. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right because uh, we I've taken the FEMA people over there to look at it, and um, so that was the. And the and then again, you know, the idea on the twenty thousand dollars of ditching. How we came up with that money is we um, we went with the mileage of roads that we have and said if we were going to do the ditching every seven to eight years, um, how much money, you know, how many miles a year could we do and you know, back that into some sort of calculation with, say, a $125 an hour excavator, you know. Um, but that doesn't mean that we have to do everything linear. It doesn't, you know, if we do have something that needs to be taken care of with some stone or something that we could grab that out of this higher piece. You know, if someone's going to do some ditching up <coughs> up the river road and then maybe put in a load of stone, you know, we have that money. Uh, where in the past it ended up being a non-line item item that runs over that you have to make up somewhere else. So we're just trying to make sure that we have some areas of that for the budget. One of the other budget areas in there that we added was culvert, or not culvert, was guardrail because we didn't really have a separate line item for guardrail. And um, so we did put money in there. And since then, I have spoken with someone at the state, and they're actually um, there where we might be able to get some used guardrail and gave us a better contract place. So my hope is we don't end up spending all that. But I found that out after we got the budget going. So, um, so we found a couple in rows where we might be able to have some savings. So Chris, you mentioned uh, that in hiring some of this work out, we don't have to buy the equipment. I mean, I guess a roadside mower is one of them. So I think, <coughs> so I think, <coughs> excuse me, we don't have to buy by subcontracting this out. One of them is the roadside mower. One of them is the bigger excavator because that was one of the things about ditching was getting a bigger yeah. machine. Um, so that prevents us from having to buy that too. So that kind of makes it nicer. Yeah. And, and this would be areas that we would have to use a big machine. You know, I would say, I don't know, let's just say half of probably the roads in the town, we can just do a greater ditch, right? And we'll continue to do those with our own machine. But there are, you know, areas on the sides of the hill that we need to actually, you know, ditch with a, an excavator with, and it may have to put a little bit of stone in it or something mm -hmm. else. And that's, that's kind of what that item's intended for. But we'll continue to do, the road crew will continue to do you know, if they have to cut some greater ditches here and there, we'll continue to do those ourselves. But if you haven't been on Campbell Road, you know, in the, go up in the summer over to Campbell Road, that's a good example of something where we ended up contracting out after the April flood because they lost, you know, a big portion of their road. And we ended up putting in a bigger ditch, deeper ditch, and then stone lining it so that, you know, because in places up there were carrying the water for so long that, so things like that definitely need, you know, a bigger machine. And on so. Christian Hill Road, too, you have a subcontractor do that, and they did a good job. We yep. did, yeah. And we're, and we're looking at that, too, um, um, which is actually um, some illusion here. We, Chris and I have been talking about that as far as, and I think I mentioned that to you the other day when you were in the office, was about Christian Hill, and we know we need to do some paving, but we know we have some water issues further up the hill. Mm -hmm. And then I had talked to you about talking that we wanted to talk to um, the quarry, but you had mentioned something on that road that they were willing to do? Oh, okay. Uh, I call it the slot. As you, you go up Christian Hill Road and then turn on uh, Sanders Road. Yep. And you go out and, and uh, then there's that very steep, very narrow, windy place just before you get to, I can't remember the name of that slide road. Is it Quarry? Road. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I talked to 
the uh, manager at Rock of Ages again a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. They're still willing to come and do the drilling and blasting of the ledge that would be necessary to widen that part of the road so it's not so dangerous. Now, which, wow. where is that? What part? That's on Wilson Road. Just the ledge, just Wrong Wilson right. Road. I couldn't hear what you said. Oh, Wilson, Wilson Road. Road. Sorry, I was like. The, the intersection of Sanders Road and Wilson yeah. Road is yeah. just at the top of this, what I call a slot that's so uh, yeah. narrow. And, and I can, uh, uh, Teresa, I can get you the name, phone number of the fellow uh, if you want. Because they want to make, yeah, and that's what we were talking about, Chris and I were talking about too, was the fact that, you know, redoing some of Christian Hill. We know we have water issues and we know it's kind of. We're going to keep repaving that. We've got to deal with some of it. And part of it was too reaching out to them and saying, hey, look, you know, obviously they put some heavy trucks over it. They want, yeah. you know, can we kind of partner and pay the places on there? And then I forgot Lucian had mentioned that. So, yeah, he told me that a number of years ago they helped with uh, Sanders Road down further. Uh, or actually, they was just up from Wilson Road. There's a flat part there that's kind of marshy. They said they helped by putting in some. Uh, Matting, you know, under the road. Nice. That's exactly what they call it. So it might be worth getting them together and kind of sitting down with them, maybe, yeah. and Chris there, and I. There are some top. trees that, are, that would have to be cut on top of this ledge. Yeah. But the road is so narrow that the road right away might take yeah. those <laughs> trees, <laughs> and all you have to do is cut them. <laughs> yeah. So no, it's you know we need to partner with them. I think if we're going to redo part of Christian Hill instead of continuing to throw good money after bad, we've got some issues with water and kind of deal with the whole thing and maybe them too. I mean, so. the building the plastic is, is the most expensive oh. part of it, and they want yeah. and they they want it fixed too because it's dangerous for the <coughs> trucks. It's you know it's yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So yeah, let me know. You have my email. You can email. I have a name up there too. Maybe it's the same guy. I'm not sure. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, but well, they'd be good. So so I thought that was my Lucian had mentioned that. So it was great that Lucian had reached out to them. So that might be an opportunity for us to deal with a couple of issues on that road. All right. Anything else budget wise? Murray is his last name, okay. but I'll get you his phone number. Okay, thank you. Yes, Jason. So I have a question on the culverts. They're going to be just for our road, not driveway culverts, right? Yeah, just just for our roads, yeah. Because I know we had talked about cleaning some certain driveway culverts, and I didn't think that the town did that. We'll continue to clean culverts, but we're not going to, we won't purchase cul culverts for oh. driveways. Um, That's going to be one of the pushes this summer is to get, we, there's a lot of, I, we made sure we put some money in the budget to get the rest of them done. If I can see about pipeline or somebody to come in and get the rest of the, all the driveway culverts, everybody's culverts open. Because as we've talked about, if their culverts fail, our culverts fail. So and yes, uh, by the or by the policy that the select board had adopted you know, a bunch of years ago, the driveway culverts are the responsibility of the homeowners. But if we weren't maintaining theirs, theirs were getting plugged. So we need to get them all open so the water flow and then remind everybody, you know, it's easier for them to come in and clean the edges out with a shovel than it is, you know, for them to pay to have a blast well, I never would have mentioned it, but you can come and help me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's been tough. So definitely something we need to do for all of our sakes is to get them open and flushed out. But yeah, homeowner has to replace their own. Well, remember, there's, you know, there's a fair amount of items in the town that you know, require attention that maybe haven't gotten the attention over time and we can't right the ship overnight. So we're, you know, trying to prioritize those and hopefully everybody sees that we, you know, each year we are increasing of what we're doing and try to be conservative with, you know, um, with the budget at the same time, so. Well, the amount of increase in taxes this year is very small, so it's really good for the budget. Yeah, and, and you look at things like, you know, that's why we, you know, like throwing something like guardrail in. I mean, Nobody really realizes, you know, until you're out there on all the roads, which, you know, I, I, we were this year. I know all the roads now, yeah. which is, you know, but, you know, there's a lot of guardrail out there that is flat or not, you know, not as safe as it should be. Um, and it, it's an item that, you know, we've never thought about doing unless, you know, it, you know, something happened and someone took out the guardrail and then it had to get fixed. But, you know, so there's a lot of those things that, you know, never have been budgeted in the past that, you know, we should have some sort of budget in there um, to be able to do if, if needs to be time, so. Cecil had his hand up. 
Yes. Yeah. When are they going to do something with those driveways up on Camp Brook so the water don't run off the hill across the road and freeze everywhere? There's three of them up there. Camp Brook. KT Griffins, uh, the Upper Comstock Road. Oh. Um. And Jibber, uh, Not Jibber. Um. What his name? Every time you get in rain, it comes right down into the road, freezes across the blacktop. Then they've got to put the salt. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you, they're not the only ones. When we were out this summer after April, there's a lot of driveways that I understand that. that you're right. They're not crowned. They're I not agree. ditched. And so I think we're going to have to notify a lot of home, a lot of um, homeowners because they probably were given once upon a time a driveway or curb cut and have never. At you're Casey's, sure, but you're right. At Casey's, there used to be a ditch right from the driveway coming off the hill right down where his mailbox is. Now there's no ditch there and the water comes out into the road. Yes, filled then. Yeah. Well, I'll put it's on the same up there. The, uh, um, what was it called? Some sort of cut. Uh, what's his name? Bob. Uh, road. It's the other end of uh, Cat, uh, Comstock Road, anyway. So yeah. So now the water runs right down into the road every time it rains or thaws, and freezes in the road. Yep, so there's three of them. Okay, driveways. Don't be an accident there one of these days. <clears throat> no, you're right. Because people drive on the other side of the road coming up through to get away from it. Especially there by on the upper Comstock Road. Bob Bath's road, whatever you want to call it. Never bothered until Bob Bath built the road up there. <laughs> Alright, I'll make a note. Then there's no COVID across there. No more in your down the cases. Right. Yeah. There so we can get <coughs> um water guy be channel. Uh -huh. we can there is one cold one. coming off of that road as you come off the old Comstock. If you go to your right coming out the driveway, there is a cold with there. So it's a but that goes that across Pellegrino's road, right? No. Mm -mm. One, if you come out that driveway that... Um, Down below it. No, this is out of one that Bob Bess built. The one that he built that goes up a hill that comes down. Yeah. There, is a, there is a culvert that comes right, you come out and you make a right out of the, there's a culvert there that bleeds off into the one that runs off into the white yeah. probably. Okay. Just well, just, if you yeah. see anything like that, Cecil, just, feel yeah, free to reach out to Therese or yeah. myself or any of the board members. Yeah, tell me the names get, and all. Okay. Get cut okay. you know, like we said, there's, there are quite a bit of spots out there to, that could be done. Um, yeah. We're not going to get them all one day, but we'll make a list. So. Yes. Not one player left. Come over to Gage Hill, because we got plenty of Ungage. water running down and, and <laughs> over, over East Buffalo. I know and we only got about that much road that's actually in Buffalo, but yeah. we can use some love. No, yeah. you're right. I was actually out there because um, isn't that where the assistant town clerk, Mrs. Marge Turner? Yeah, she's our neighbor. Yeah, because Marge called once and I went over. Oh, and, and you better I, believe that it's bad if Marge Turner calls yeah. you. You better pay attention. You, I, go, I went you over. do not ignore Miss Marge. I did not. I went over that day, as a matter of fact, shortly after she called and you could see it. And actually, I talked to the road foreman about it. So I'll mention it to him again because you could see it cutting well, across. And, yeah, and it's us. because it's further up. It's not you're raining correctly. You're, you're, cold, you're exactly so. right. So I'll remind Alan. But don't you take the room off of my lawn. Yeah, yeah I'm not on it. I know. I barely got in there. It is. There you go. So yeah, I'll mention it to Alan because I did. I went over yeah, after March called last year. So we, and um, it was eating around her driveway. So, yeah, um, but yeah, I'll have let Alan know too. So thank you. I, I would say it was kind of eye opening. You know, I went around and. Um, managed a lot of the FEMA gravel road jobs this summer and you know to see where uh, you know we had water typically on certain roads that just daylighted into the road you know like yeah. you know there was didn't day you know didn't it just you know and they wanted to put it back that way and it's you know in some cases we mitigate well we mitigated it yeah. and you know on a couple of the roads we put in some extra culverts to be able to get the water to flow in the right directions because you know like up in Saunders Road for instance the water that used to come down from the um, the, the quarry just daylighted into the road like it didn't go anywhere you know so we had to you know at that point we had to put in a drive culvert and some ditching to get it down the road so it can daylight into um, one of the wetlands there but you know and that's I would say it's pretty common in a lot of 
a lot of roads and you know you wouldn't think until you've kind of driven all these roads and uh, or like Campbell you know you know every two to three hundred feet you should have a culvert on a road that size so that it can get the water off and you know the culverts up there are every thousand feet you know mm -hmm. so there, there's a lot of water that's got to go before it can hit a culvert so but those are you know I guess there's a lot of learning this summer and we were able to um, fix some of it and other pieces we have on our list to, to do yeah. coming so and Cecil's right there's definitely a list of people that we saw that we're gonna have to go back oh, yeah. out and mail them letters and be like look they haven't crowned their roads they haven't ditched mm -hmm. their roads all that water is coming and that was part of the problem in April the storm was coupled and there's some driveways that are big that are dry. they're coming in and they're plugging our culverts because their driveway isn't crowned and we're yeah. eating it so we're definitely gonna make a We'll have to deal with that as well this summer too. So, anything else budget-wise? All right. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. <coughs> yep. Yeah. So, well, hold on, hold on, Ellie. We're gonna we're gonna finish up with Rick. Uh, oh. Just some of the um, some of the town meeting day formalities. Just, just to uh, make sure we're all on the same page and to alleviate some uncomfortable situations. Um, I just wanted to go through to make sure that um, both both Paul and Lind Lindley, if you guys are, which I assume you are. Can, going to be running again to uh, have somebody ready to, to uh, nominate. Um, and I don't know if you caught it or not, but there was a, there was a typo yeah, in I the warning. Yeah, I told him, yeah. But the, he has probably has the correct warning. So Lindley's piece is two year term, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, he probably has the accurate Just warning. in case you didn't have a corrected version. Yeah, because yeah. she's not on number five. It's a two year term. Which is right, it's worn correctly out. Uh, worn correctly, but the copies that went into yeah. the book were, were right, incorrect. Yeah. Yeah, so she's a two-year. That's three years long. Yeah, it does say three. I meant the one that was actually... Yeah, the one that was, one that was actually warned that went, you know, like put, posted in five places around town, that one does say two years. And the one that went in the paper says two years. But um, yeah, it was a mistake in the past town meeting in the town, of course. We finally corrected both things. And I'm not sure, too, about the listers, who's running for what okay, term. Okay, that's my next question. I don't know. Judy, are you going to run for Louise's three-year yeah. seat? Yes. Yeah. And then she's going to run for the one year? Out, no, to finish out uh, Jim Gray's. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. So, are we aware of anyone to run for for purpose? She's, Louise, I spoke to her tonight. She's making a phone call to someone to see if he's interested, but she doesn't know yet. So I, if she finds out, I'll have her tell you. How's that? Okay. And that may be a situation where um, no one runs and the select board has to appoint a point later. Or, she has a someone to, I'm sure Louise will not make. Is that something that somebody can nominate from the floor of town meeting? They can, but someone wants to be whoever is nominated. Oh, right, yes, someone has to accept the nomination. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. They, they want to realize what they're getting, you know. Getting it. I would do it. I'm just curious. It's true. Before you can say that. But no, I would do it. Well, we did have that two, two years ago. We had an individual that was nominated and that wasn't there. Remember? Yeah. And, uh, that's, yeah. Um, that's the listers. Um, I've talked to Jason. He's okay. I haven't talked to Stan yet. But I'm okay. Little. Well, I think they sent back notes saying they would do it. Okay. That's right. So. Yeah, Kelly. I had Kelly do it in advance of town meeting so that you weren't sandbag and you'd know who was going to do it. Um, Carol, I haven't talked to it. Did you? I think so. We'd have to double check with Kelly. Yeah. I, I'll, I should be seeing you before that anyway. And as far as talking on, on these various items, I'm, I'm assuming for uh, 
Article 12, probably Chris. Yep. Yeah, I'll talk about that with um, page 48 there. And then we'll have corrected uh, yep. Article 13s out yep. there. For Kelly now. is, yeah, Kelly is printing them and they're going to be on all the chairs um, at town meeting and also um, there'll be a stack from up there, so. And was anyone, was anyone planning on speaking to that? Um, did it in the past? Yes, yes, I'll speak to that. Yeah. Because I think there is something that didn't make it in there. Wait, just so you can see 13 got cut off for some reason. No, yeah, but there was an appropriation that. Oh, there, yeah. well, the Central Vermont Council on Aging, we assume that they're going to stand up and request twice that. Okay. So, but they are planning on having someone there, and I think it might be Carol Ketchum who's okay. going to stand up and speak and to double to increase their appropriation from 650 to. Mm -hmm. I talked to Carol the other day. He said he told me he wouldn't. Oh, he wouldn't. He wouldn't so they're it. probably so looking for somebody. I think they probably will send somebody over to speak on it. But if I not, the select board could do it. They could. You guys could make a motion to. No, at this point, I mean, they should have. I know a she's trying. Well, she's. I knew she was trying when I called yeah. her. She said she was yeah, trying. Yeah, we can try to make a point to have yeah. them, have somebody come and yep. speak to. It. Do you know if, any, if anyone is speaking uh, regarding the middle, middle, middle branch? Yep, uh, Rick Wright. Rick Wright? Yeah, he said he would be there. Okay. And the uh, tax uh, installments usually doesn't get much. Even though three of the four are on Sundays. <laughs> so somebody will pick that up. Somebody will figure that out. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. I mean, it, it's just hard because yeah. if you change them, everybody, you can't have one in the 15th, one in the 17th, yeah. one that gets goofed up. We give people extra time, so. Yeah. Right. And 17 is that non-binding referendum you have to talk about. Right. Um, so, just, I'm sure there'll be questions on that. Do you want to talk to that about that prior to, or just answer questions as they come up? Well, I think, I think we should have somebody from either the board or yeah. from the town office that should speak in regards to the ordinance. Um, not just what's in the ordinance, but also <clears throat> the formality of how that would be enacted. Yeah. If yeah. it, you it's know. It's really going to be just a, just a yeah. I think it's simple. It's an informational vote and then, and then based upon the results there, then the, then the, um, the select, select board, board will take it up or not take it yeah. up. I think that one of the select board members should be prepared to speak on it. I mean, but we can certainly. And I don't have to know that tonight. But it is, a, yeah. you're right. I mean, it's going to be, I think the select board, I mean, I know, I don't think the select board has agreed that they will vote, they will do what the voters ask. If they say they want yeah. it, they'll pass one. If they say they don't, they won't. That's really the way they've left it. But we'll um, get somebody to do it. If, well, and if we have, um, nobody wants to, then I can do it. But well, I wonder if, if we should not, somebody, somebody can do it. Have more copies of it. I was just going to yeah, there's some on the website too, but I will. Yeah, but Kelly. a lot of the people who come in town meeting don't do it. That's true. I'll have Kelly make some more copies. I'll make a note. Does anybody on the board want to present the ordinance? Or I don't see the heads going up and down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can. I can if you don't want to. But Kelly prints extra um, copies of drafts. Trash. I mean, I have no problem doing it. Yeah. I don't. Between Teresa and I, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll get it done. So we'll take care of that. And as far as other business, I don't know if anything's <coughs> been brought to you as a concern. That I haven't heard anything. Like last year, we had a couple of things that were out there that never yeah. came to flourishing, yeah. but yeah. I haven't heard anything this year. Is anybody else on the board? Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Bob. Actually, that's not true. I did. Uh, I did. Uh, someone. I read, I don't remember where, is that the possibility that somebody might come about the talk about, want to talk about the free table, but that would not be relevant here because it's not a, um, that's a different board. So even under that, it's not appropriate at the town meeting because that's the, would have to go in front of the Bethel Royals and Transfer Station Board. But I, I have heard that possibility. I don't know. That wouldn't be the place. Anyway, so. Just to give everybody, just to give you a heads up. Yep. 
So I guess the most important question was, uh, will you be running for the moderator position again? Or <laughs> we <always saw>. yeah. <laughs> Was there a reason why you skipped over that? Or? <laughs> I guess you know, that's what I've asked, yes. <laughs> this year, anyway. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I think we we have everything all all our ducks in a row for. I think so. Yeah, day. Kelly has been putting out put out a note for um, pies, and then but really, as I've said before, it's the town moderators meeting, and we I did ask Kelly to get a hold of uh, Seth Stoddard. Was that right. me? Yeah. So I did, um, and he's all set. Yeah. So thank you for us, as I yeah. thought about that. So no, I think everything's all set. I know you're going to have kind of a crazy day because you also have your presidential primary. Well, that's one, yeah. that's one thing I wanted to mention just in passing. I had questions, folks came to me over the weekend. There are going to be three things going on at the same time that day. You've got the, the presidential primary, you have the voting for the school uh, directors, and that will be happening out in the, the elementary school lobby all day long, and then the town meeting itself. Well, right, Pam around. is really the one that's going to have her hands full. Right. Yeah. Well, the BCA is going to have to and jump right in and help out. And we meeting in Bethel that night? Friday. I mean, Monday. Monday, Monday night. night. Oh, Monday. Monday night, yeah, school meeting oh. Monday night. Oh. And then yeah. Tuesday all day is, is voting. Tuesday. Oh. Okay. All right. That's, yeah. that's good to know. It's Monday night. But it's in Bethel. It is in Bethel. In Bethel this year, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's right. All right. Yes. Uh, when you start talking about the skateboard park, can I say something before you start talking about it? Um, or, or I can get, are you going to be here for a little bit? Or? Well, I'm going to be here, but I'd okay. like to say what has to be said before you start discussing it. Because we'll, um, what I'd like to do is recognize the, when we get to it, recognize the, the recreation committee just to kind of go over where we, left off last time and then and then we can get some um, comments if that works for you. Pretty important what I have to say. Okay. So look no no that, I, I understand that Joe. Well gotcha. and I got gotcha. you. So well um when we get to it so we'll move on to the recreation committee. Um and then we'll just kind of where we left off last time was um Okay. I just want to, I'm just, I'm confused and I just want to clarify. But we did, we did last, um, last select board meeting because you and we've all agreed that the voters gave us 50000 and that's what we've been working with. And then anything above that is the grants and the fundraisers that we've been doing, right? So, um, what my confusion is, is how I got the 57,000 um, total um, funds, over 57,000, is by um, taking the fundraising and the expenses for the fundraising and the design from Spawn Ranch, the 3,000. And then this is the 50,000 that you've guaranteed us. This is the grants that we've gotten. And this is the total from the expenses and fundraising. Right, we yes. matched. You and I agree yes. on that number. Yes. yes. But my confusion is what page? Be on page 54, because you said that we're, we don't get any improvement fund for this project, that. Um, on 54, in the year 1819, you listed out of the improvement fund uh, 3000 for the skateboard park design. Yeah, that was that, what we paid Spawn Ranch. Yes, but, but that, it should not be in fundraising because you're saying here, it's a confusion that you're saying you're taking out the improvement fund. But you haven't given us any improvement fund. 
Oh, well, this recreation is all the money. This is the skate yeah. park, the trails, so the swings. The... Out of the improvement fund, that's confusing. Oh, well, I, I guess it was just a term. I mean, yeah. I, mean I meant because so, all your so money went into the improvement yeah. fund, even your donations. So I just was trying to be clear when I took the 3000 yeah. so you could well, see Well, so where because if, if, if you're not giving us, uh, letting us take the 3000 out of the improvement, I, if you're allowing us to take the 3000 out of the improvement fund, then we then we could be having sixty thousand instead of fifty seven thousand. Oh, I, I well I separated out the skate park specifically for the skate park, yeah. so that's how you got fifty seven instead of sixty is because you already spent three. Yeah. So but, I tried to break out your expenses yes, so that. but but it just it's, it's not very clear here if it's well if it's uh, in the improvement fund because. We're thinking that you're giving us improvement. Oh, well, well, make, uh, it's not under fundraising. Right. Well, I mean, I would have had to do this huge yeah. breakdown as to every yeah. expense. I mean, because yeah. it, it no, didn't I come just, out of this. Expense, I just wanted but. to not be confused. Well, you're stuck at the fifty-seven thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just, you know, it's just. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I yeah. could have added more detail, I guess. Okay. But. So I just wanted to clear it up. Joe, do you have something that you wanted to? Talk about. I can speak. Remember last meeting we had? I asked if anybody got in touch with Randolph to find out why they didn't have their skateboard park. Tuesday morning, I did. They're in the process of being sued, or they got sued, and they had all the signs up that said skate at your own risk, and she said that did not mean anything. So it's gonna it's an accident waiting to happen, and it's a lawsuit waiting to happen. That's well, all I have to say. Mull went and spoke to the town manager, and he could, and it was kind of the same thing, except it wasn't your take on it. Was that the the skate park was deteriorated, and and, and, and that's why they may have got sued. Well, tell you can he can tell you what Adolfo said. Yeah, he just said that the, the old skate park was plywood and whatnot. And yeah, but the the woman I talked to, I'm not going to give her name. She said those songs didn't mean anything. He didn't so, tell me about a lawsuit, which yeah. probably he wouldn't anyways yeah. if, it was, if it was being litigated. But. You know, I, I, I don't know. I just think. I think that part of it could be exactly as a combination of what things. I mean, it could be the fact that yes, they had pro they had signage up, but if the thing was deteriorated and that person could prove it, then they you would get sued because they would have it would have been their responsibility to maintain it. So absolutely. But, but who's to say, you know, I mean. What happens if a kid comes over there with a bicycle and starts doing jumps and everything lands on his head? Yeah, I mean. You're going to get sued. Well, I mean, the tough thing is it's no different than if we, whatever, someone's over there skating on it right now and falls down and, you know, blows out their knee. It, it's the same thing. Or if we had a basketball court and someone fell down and got hurt or, right. you know. Yeah. If, the, if the town was felt to be liable, we'd have to pay our deductible of $1,000. When I was a kid, we had all that stuff, but nobody sued everybody. No, I know. We're a right. different world. You went to the doctor, you got to fix the doctor. Yeah. So that's why you have like a notice up. You have a notice up that says, uh, assume your own risk, basically. I mean, that's what those kinds of places are. Right. And while you well, carry insurance, the town pays a deductible if it becomes necessary. Yeah. Right. Can't we just take a remote or something? I mean, times have changed, interests have changed. I just hear more negative than positive, and it seems like if we're going through with a skateboard park, we're c catering to a rather minute group, if there's even a group out there anymore. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's just my input. I'm not saying it. I mean, it's such a small, select group. I don't even see anybody doing it anymore. And I think it's just the way times have changed. And we just kicked this skateboard park around and around. I mean, it's been about 10 years now, it seems. No, it has been less than four. Well, it, it feels took, like 10. Okay. It, <laughs> and it took, it took Who's um, five to years to do the pool house. Right. Uh, things take time. So I guess r right now anyways, in regards to the skateboard park is, you know, the skateboard park was part of the master plan for the uh, recreation Committee that was, you know, informally voted upon by the townspeople. So it wasn't the select board skateboard park. It's not the oh, recreation. I you know, that. so I would say on that end of things, if if the townspeople weren't or aren't happy with 
the master plan the way it is now, then it would be up to the townspeople to um, to petition. congregate and petition to have that done. But it's not going to come from here. Um, uh, I, I knew mean, that. I, I, so I, mean, I mean, that's I've been going I mean, on town interest that I've talked right. to. Yeah, and, and I guess some of them. Do you have young children, though? Huh? Do you have young children or children in the school? Yeah, because I brought one. I mean, that's the thing. It's like you say, oh, well, I've talked to people. But are you, is it yeah, naive it to assume that head you head talk head. to a full selection oh, of what? the populace? No, and it was 2017 when we voted in a town meeting. I believe, Ellie, you'll remember, it was like 124 yeah. to, what was it, double digits barely? It's right here. That there was an overwhelming vote. Uh, 145. Well, I mean, it's on the agenda, so I think tonight uh, is the night. Uh, 145 to 26 was the so vote. There, and that sounds an awful lot like a mandate to me that the people of this right. town voted that they wanted a skateboard park because they voted to put money into it. I make the choice not to have children because this town doesn't offer them anything. But I have a nephew, I have small kids. Yes, they are skateboarding. They are skateboarding. They're going to be drinking, they're going to be taking drugs. Somebody's going to get hurt. It's not fair to say that one bad apple smells a bunch of fur. It's all over. They're not going to do anything. It's all over. You go to Pink Line Park, you go to Pink Line Park, they're taking drugs. Walk down North Main Street. This is a completely separate issue that's irrelevant with the fact of what the space is meant for. You can't take a problem that is a genuine, yes, problem that's encompassing an area and say it's a reason not to build a space for kids to go to something saying, positive. I'm but saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, that's why we People have sue. That's why we have insurance. We live in yeah, freaking America. That's what they do, unfortunately. Oh. All right, so well, okay, so for right now, let's bury the hatchets. The, um, the way I see it right now is there's a few things. So the plan was voted on by the tax people. I can tell you that I'm not in favor of the skateboard park, but I'm in favor of making sure that what the citizens of the town of Bethel voted on is what moves forward. Um, I have other ideas, but I'm not going to put those forward. That's, that's for the recreation committee to, you know. Well, you're part of the town. So but the thing is, is that your opinion <clears throat> of what you would like in there, or right. what we should do, and what the, we should do. The right? issues we have with the town of Bethel right now <laughs> is we don't have enough committed people that want to get on the committees. So, what I'll say right now is, this, you know, if you look at the recreation committee, it's made up of two people. No, no. Okay, well, well you're no. not helping yourself. <laughs> so, okay, you have got more. I'm not it's a big so, thing. so no, what I'm saying is, is so the stalls in this is. is there's a couple issues here. So one, we don't have enough, you know, a committee like the recreation committee should have, you know, seven people on it. Um, it, it has two to four at the most. Um, right now, mostly, you know, might be three, but mostly two people on it. Um, and when you have a committee that's struggling like that, it's hard to move forward the plans because now it falls on the back of one or two people to, to do all this. Um, at the same time, we have been we have been spinning our wheels on the skateboard park for far too long, um, and we are getting to a resolution on that of either, you know, move it forward, put it on the shelf, and move something else forward because there's more to this there's more to the recreation area than it is just the skateboard park. There are other things that everybody wants to see there, um, and unfortunately, in, you know, in our society, that you know there there are a lot of things that. Um, can happen at any, you know, recreation area that someone could fall down and get hurt. There's, you know, there's the opportunity for people to do things there that they shouldn't be doing. Um, and, you know, that's why we do have insurance and that's why we do have a constable and, um, but, you know, skateboard park or tennis court or whatever, you're still going to have, you know, probably some activities going on there that we don't want to have happen. So, so this evening we're just, you know, we're, Working with the uh, recreation committee last time, um, you know, I think we got through where we left off last time. Is the budget is fifty-seven thousand for it? If um, if there are other items that you can fundraise between now and then, and you want to add to that, we were fine with that. The biggest holdup at this point was the soils that were 
that we hadn't um, exploratory dug over there to figure out what we had because there was some concerns from the board members on you know not wanting to put an investment there and then find out that the soil is not right for it and 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 maybe possibly run into an issue like Joe where we build a skateboard park a year from now it's all cracking now it's a safety issue and a kid gets hurt okay so I guess that kind of goes full circle um, I know this past week when I was at the office they were actually out there digging um, the information that at least that I had from the work crew was once they got to about two and a half feet in the ground that about two and a half feet two. then there was okay two feet two and a half three feet yeah. there's some clay there so the at that point the um, the recommendations that I had talked to Therese about in the office was to follow that information up with the pictures to Mr. Parker to find out does that information change his his scope of work or his bid because I think the last thing that the board wanted to do was invest money into something have have it opened up and then find out it's going to cost x amount more to you know to lay the foundation because of the soils there so and i did do that i sent an email to jane and her face saying that this is what you found there was a breakdown and asked to let to get a hold of mr parker to find out what it's going to do for this and then and jane had already had the idea on the smaller one yeah. and, 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 and i did because car russell works with a lot of um, dirt and wood. You know, I got Carl's email, but it's yeah. irrelevant now because we dug. Right. We dug a ditch but where the skate park is going. This is one I got today. Can, can I present it to From whom? Carl? From Carl. But no, but Carl wasn't there. Yeah, we no, dug. I know. I mean, that's, I guess at this point, what. He's got quite a bit of information. It's not in plain, there's no layer. It's nothing like that. Yeah. Oh, that's what Carl's saying in his email? Yeah. Okay, th there's a mitigation plan? Yeah. yeah. A possibility. A possibility. Yeah. But I guess yeah. at this point, has the information from um, from the exploratory digging got to Parker? Yes. And then what is, what is the response from Parker at this point? The response is, as much as the soil is his baby, Geological issues below that are outside his wheelhouse. He recommended that we speak with some soil people and see what what he said. Uh, consistent with what what Carl Russell suggested in that email, um, we can dig the clay out and replace the soil. Michael thought that was a reasonable idea. Carl thought that's a reasonable idea, mm -hmm. and I thought it was a reasonable idea before I even saw his email. So, so how does that? So where are we going to get the material? So the clay yeah. mitigation. How does that impact the initial quote that you so are working on in your budget? We've got 19k from town meeting power that we can play with. Yeah, There's I'm thinking. A lot of trucking and excavation. We get a few soil donations of clean fill, and we get the clay out of there, and then we have something that we can put in place, have it in place before Michael even shows up to do his work. Uh, his his key emphasis was that it be compacted. So it sounds like we don't have a compactor, but if we had the means to compact the soil, I mean, we're, we're talking about a bunch of dirt. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is basically, since um, it's like we're already promised them 20,000 and in kind, we really couldn't come up with it because we didn't have the material he's saying, have the town excavate out down as far as they need to. But what are we gonna excavate yeah. with? Our excavator, we have a motor excavator, dig it out and haul it off, and then we're going to have to bring it in. I mean, that, that little, that's not that's going to take appropriate a for that type of work. The town doesn't have a compactor either. No, we know that, compactor. but can you dig, can we dig out that size, that skate park with the backhoe? And the equipment that we have. Oh, we got a backhoe, right? We don't have a backhoe. We have a backhoe with a bucket attacked in it. It's always. If the soil is not digged into a lot of stone and stuff, the digging bucket would too big to get down enough. But I, well, we dug it with the bucket. We, this, we dug it last Friday with what, with okay, a piece of our equipment. Like, <coughs> that open up. Um, do you remember Shane? What's the biggest book we're looking at is twenty by eighty. Twenty, 20 by 80. eighty, and we Plus dug it. Something Richard dug it on Friday. Plus the margin. Sure. Was there? I, I missed it. Was there any 
clay involved in yeah it? there was clay that's what we got there was, there was like a foot of topsoil dug a couple feet of clay then some more gravel but we dug it richard dug it the other day in front of the swing set where it's going so i'm assuming we it might take us some time but we could dig that out with what we have but i, I think what i'd be looking at is my what i'd like I, to I, see I've never is seen that. well i mean this is just talks about how to mitigate it but doesn't it's not doesn't plan. solve the pl it Right, it's not going to say right now I recommend to dig down four feet and put four yeah, feet in new material. So so I guess that's the information that I would like to see mm -hmm. as a board member is it, how far down do we have to go? You know, if, if we hit clay at two feet, does that mean, you know, two feet and then the clay layer is, I don't know, foot or foot and a half? Do we have to dig out four feet and put all four feet of new material in? You got to dig four feet. And then what is, what's the quantity of material? Um, I know we can talk about donations, but you know, I mean, my fear is that we start a project on the hopes of donations and then all of a sudden it gets on the backs of the taxpayers. That, that's my fear. It can't just be filled with, with soil there. It's gotta be, it's gotta See, be a, a drainage same. type of situation. Just in there. You know, hard panic or, or uh, Good clean gravel or whatever, but you know you just can't put dirt back in what you take out. I was wrong. Three hundred fifteen yards. Uh, what's the, what, how many cubic yards? Three hundred fifteen yards. Three hundred fifteen yards. That's a twenty-five by eighty-five by four foot deep hole. So you could, so we could haul it out, and then it would have to be maybe some material, some. Maybe some drainage pipe. I mean, I'm not really sure what you, you know. I'd have to read Carl's email and see what else he suggests, and we can see. But obviously, if someone's going to do drainage, ditch, and gravel, and then it's going to have to be compacted. We'd have to rent a compactor to get it compacted properly for him, I'm sure, because we just don't have any geological people at all like I have to pay. Is there a short list of no, I, I have to pay somebody. To come. I have to be an engineer. I'm actually looking for someone to do soil borings. I have three people that I'll put calls out to. You know, or put um, I'll put an RFP out to get prices, but I don't. I, I'm sorry, I don't. Um, I mean, you could probably get an excavation contractor in, and maybe you know, a lot of those guys obviously know exactly what they're doing, sure. have experience, and can tell you exactly what you need to do. Whether or not they're going to put their name on it if something happens is another. But when, when I spoke to him, I pulled up five minutes before I walked in here. <laughs> he he said um, he's pretty confident that we could do a 12 by 80 for 55k. He's optimistic that we could do 16 by 80 for 55k. He's cautiously optimistic that maybe we could do a 20 foot. I mean, I think, you know, one option here is to, you know, I guess the way I would look at it is to, to get a local contractor to go over there and look at the area that we're talking about that would be the foundation, let's say, mm -hmm. with some of the soil information that we have and say, whatever, I'm just throwing something out. Say, you bring Dylan over there and say, Dylan, we have this 20 by 80 yeah. piece that we have here and here's... Here's the soils that we have here. We're thinking about boxing this out four feet, putting in four feet of new material. What do we think that this is gonna run us? Okay. Oh, by the way, the town can do all the hauling of the stone, you know, whatever those in-kind things are, yeah. and see what that price is. Cause you know, I mean, if, I could get if we can mitigate this prices. thing for, a, you know, four or five grand, I think you're fine. But if it yeah. becomes this big, large number, then and obviously it cuts into the overall budget of the park. I could get two guys over, I could get but, Gilman and... But I mean, just like anything you build, I mean, yeah, I it starts with the foundation. If the foundation yeah. is not built correctly, then you're just wasting money on building 
you know, a cement pad on top of, you know. I could get a couple so prices to do the 20 by 80 and four feet deep. I mean, I can yeah. take somebody, I can but get a couple We're also sure. making assumptions based on how big was the hole that, you, that was dug the other day? Oh, uh, he went down six feet and, you know. But, but you're looking at a hole as opposed Any, to a huge well, area. Well, I mean, I it was an area of like a yeah. couple of bucket. Yeah, he wide, went out. You know. yeah, that was all. He just took one test bore, right? Right. Yeah. But so he like, did. You know, five feet from there could be less or more. Could be worse yeah. or better. Yeah. 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 I mean, right. Well, I mean, I can't have him dig up half. I just had him dig up a good trench in no, front no, of. No. We had him do a trench in front yes. of the swing sets. I'd have to ask Alan the idea. length of that because I don't know, or I could ask Richard. Have you assume. But and he, it's, he it's obviously equal to or worse, and you dig a 20 by 80 by 4 foot hole and put the proper compact material in there, you probably are going to be okay. Yeah. So I can get, I can get, I can get a price on that. I mean, I could get Gilman. I mean, I got to think that we could probably. But for what? Between, between hauling the stone and maybe even potentially buying the stone through some of our gravel budget, we could make that work. I don't know. But but I don't think that I don't think our we have the equipment to to properly excavate and compact the material. So I can get a again if we prices. put if we excavate that output material and then, then don't compact it correctly, then we're going to be in the same issue that we would have had if we left it clay. So I can get two I can get two Chris, prices on excavating you don't it out. Need a hole with a backhoe. Right. <laughs> I can get two prices to excavate it out, put material in, and compact. I can get two prices on that with two phone calls. I can. That's not a big deal. You got uh, DR McCullough or yeah, DH he's McCullough. out with surgery right now. But I've got. I can get. Well, he's, he has a compact. Yeah, I can get two prices. I'm sure these other guys have compactors, but I can get two prices on what it would cost to dig it all out. And, but in the last select board meeting, you said that the in kind was not equipment and it was not Stone material. So. But let me get, I can get two prices. I can get them before the next meeting, no problem. So how much is this going to delay everything? Are we going to run beyond the timetable when you won't be able to do it this year? We're still trying to be sure this time. But I mean, if, if, if we've got to get something done here that might take a month, is that, what's that going to do for your so time schedule? He, he can start work in July. Yep. Still get it done. March 10th. So our next select board meeting is March 10th. I certainly will have a cost for you by March 10th of how much it would cost to excavate and put stone in there and compact it. Yeah. And I could ask them to break it out so that we knew if the stone and tell them that we would haul. To, to your point, I think we, we might have a month to lock in. Okay. To reserve. That's, that's a guesstimate. But in speaking with him, the fact that he hasn't rushed us a set of numbers to lock in the 55 compact stone and give us a little time to respond to that. Stone means, stone I think we're probably putting it in four feet on us. Probably as you can put in two lifts. So I can, um, so that's so I could get that two lifts <clears> and get the stone in there and get the price. And I'll have them do the stone separately. And let me know what it is that they would want. Well, I mean, if we, if we did the stone and the trucking of the stone there, that's. You know, the stone's roughly around five five thousand dollars with the stone, you know, and then you know, trucking of it, you know. I mean I know we have a lot of it budgeted anyways, but you know, if you were a contractor trucking wise, you're you know, you're another, you know, fifteen, two hundred, two thousand dollars, so you know, you're probably seven thousand dollars in in kind. Um, so I, I know we talked about, you know, towards a 20 or whatever, I mean, a higher or lower, but that's, um, <clears throat> but it's, but if you have somebody with the right equipment, they can go over there and excavate that in a day, and the next day you bring your gravel in, and, you know, it's probably only a couple of day project. Well, I can get prices, I just tell them we want the stone, the trucking, the compact, the digging, all those prices separately, plus, you know, they're going to charge us to mobilize, and, um, so I could ask for those prices and then we could look at it to see it. I'll tell them what type of stone, how much quantity to give us, and then we could decide whether or not you're going to pay for the stone yourself. And then um, if we do the trucking, and they're basically just doing the compacting, the digging, and mobilizing. But I can also see one of the guys I'm going to get a price from owns a pit, so maybe he has that type of stone and we can get a good deal on it. I don't know. Because what type of you're thinking, what size? I'm thinking inch and a half or three quarter crush. Yeah, I would, you know, if, it, if someone made a, 
most of them around here make like an inch and a half or inch and a quarter, but like a two inch stone would probably be ideal. But we were looking for well because you're gonna put in two four inch feet. Minus. We were looking yeah. for two inch minus before. Okay, so but, inch and a quarter. But I think you know, inch. even though I know, you know, Parker's ready, and you know, we kind of have our budget figured out, but right. I think it's critical that we make sure that we okay. make sure that the foundation is done correctly because if it's not right. we're just going to be sitting here a year from now going right. all right we got an estimate here for x amount of dollars to repair all these yeah. Yeah. issues you know so that we don't get sued or whatever and now, as far as soil expertise goes do you think these contractors will be able to stay behind you know the stability of what they be installed i don't think so they're not gonna no they're no. just gonna come in and do it just back they're gonna come in dig it out four feet put the stone in and and um I don't. I don't know. I think that because nobody, they're not going to stand behind it if the thing cracks later or anything like that. I mean, they're well, I know. What they do. You know, I know in Parker's first estimates there when we were doing it there a couple years ago that he had some, he had some drainage money put into his figures. Because he was talking about doing this on the way back around side. it. And, yeah. And we know we have to some deal drainage with drainage the back side of the slab or whatever. But um, I mean, it was a different location. Yeah. I mean, we have an engineer, work, but I mean, they're pretty tapped out, I think, doing the water project. I'm, I think, I don't, I don't have to, I can't ask Mike to do that. I could ask Two Boys and King, but they're going to bill us for it to come in and take a peek at that because John's doing another project for us right now. But, um, um, well, it's also um, no matter what they use for concrete and how much steel they put. When we, That's when probably true. Dave. When we got the company, we didn't get Two Boys and King to do this master plan we got. Vermont Integral. Vermont Integrated Architecture, yeah, they're yeah. not engineers, they're architects. Well, they're, they're Asher. But, and, yeah, but I thought they had an engineer working on them. I, I wouldn't know. Uh, um, but so Dave's saying, anyways, it's probably a lot of it is to how much rebar and, you know, if he's doing concrete and what the base looks like. As long as the soil's good and the base is prepared, it's probably not going to, I mean, there's always some sort of cracking or settling, but. I can get a price on this anyways. Um, I, I can't find you an engineer in, in the next two weeks to go I'll in. I'll call the guy that did my leach field. Huh? I'll call the guy that did my leach field there you 15 go. years ago if he's still around. Um, but I can definitely get two contractors in there, Shane, and I can get pricing on that. So I can get two contractors over there. <laughs> and I can talk to them to see what they'll say as far as how if they'll stand behind it or whatever. I can ask. So the, the center needs to have a leach field. And then they hooked up to the septic, the town septic. Would an engineer have been involved in that? Is just for the design of the septic, but. No, they wouldn't, because they were just connecting to the. Oh, yeah. 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 So no. Okay. Will they stand behind this? Okay. I think at this point, we're just kind of looking, you know, can we have a local contractor go in there and just mm -hmm. dig it down to the frost line and put. Put um, you know good sub base material in there. I mean, unless we wanted to get into you know a PE design thing that will take time and and more money that's going to cut into the budget. You know. Um, so we're saying twenty by eighty by four. I can ask them if they'll stand behind it for a year. But I don't think they will. But I don't know if they will. But I'll ask them. And um, but I can get a price on that. I can get two guys. I can get a price within two weeks for sure. What's the board think? It's a phone call. We've got to put investigate. It off for another two weeks. Well, then you, we need to have an engineer come in every six months and we're going to budget somewhere. But we feel confident that if we, based on the information we have now, if we just went out there and, and boxed out that 20 by 80 or 20 by 100 spot and put you know, take four feet out and put four feet in and... Well, I'm and wondering, slab you know, we've only dug a small representation of the, of the wall 
footprint. So what's going to happen if we go over to the other end of 80 feet and it's six feet of clay? Well, they're not, if they're going to do four feet, right? I mean, it, they just replace the whole thing. Right, but right? what's how far down do we have to go? Does it have is four feet? Is that how Where far? Where that four foot change? number come from? I don't, I don't have an answer to that, but I think that's you, you typically you need to go down as you as far as your frost. Frost line, right? yeah. 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 So I mean, your yeah. typical frost line is four feet. Yeah. That's and why your water be, lines go down, you know, yeah. greater than yeah. four feet. Yeah. So right. it's not going to be used in some of the variables on what the winter's going to do to it, the clay moves, you know, I mean, you know. Well, we know it's not going to be a hard hard estimate. We're going to be asking them for uh, an estimate, and obviously it's going to change what they hit, but at least it'll give us a ballpark, right, Mo, of yeah. what we're, I give us a ballpark of it, hopefully. Now, I, and we've been dealing with this for four years. This all should have been settled before now. Yeah. Of what we're, you know. Well, who knows? And maybe, who knows? Maybe one end of it's more gravelly or sandy yeah. than the other. We could have been in a pocket of clay, for all I know, for where we were digging. You don't I know, can't. It was just one yeah. test. Board. Yeah. So we could dig, and um, so we'll just, you know, they'll give us an estimate, and yeah. obviously, if they run into something else, we'll. And we appreciate you doing this because we, we, we did we had it in a different location, and we we because people in the town want to save the field, we moved the location. It took us at least a half a year when we found that out, that we had to go for a permit to do this. So I know it's been taking time, but we've had things like having to move it to a different spot, having to get a different <coughs> permit, having to, you know, and, and not knowing what the soil was, you know, we've had different information at different times. So that's taking us. And it's, um, we started, um, we weren't allowed to work on this until the summer of 2016. So it's been three and a half years. And like I said, the pull house took four years. But we haven't replaced anything that, that got took out in the pool house and then we, we don't have a ball park, a basketball court, we don't have the tennis courts. They were taken out. I mean, yeah. are, are we just going to wait for another five or six years before we finish out whatever was in the, the plan for that place? Um, well, we'll, we'll I mean, keep working you know, and keep, you know, and we're on, like, like Chris said, we're only a small little committee. And we're doing what the voters voted on and, and, and asked us to do. There seems to be a lot of other kids that would like to have a ball, you know, a basketball court down there. So we're just going to throw them out and, and buy them a skateboard or something? No, but, but the, according to our survey, we did a survey and the that was top... four years ago. Yes, and the top thing was a safe place for kids to ride bikes. That was the top. Um, um, that that was the top one. Um, um, and and so what we have done because the kids wanted um, a place, a safe place to ride bikes, that we took it. It was a safe place for bikes was forty six point six percent. Okay, that's what they wanted. Um, uh, the new pool house was 40.9%. Uh, a teen center was 35.2%. We realized we couldn't do that. The hiking trails was 34.1%, and we've been doing the hiking trails. The tennis courts was 30.1%, and the basketball was 29.5%. So, so we've been, we, took, we took the skateboard park interest and we took the, the, the um, big, big item for a safe place for kids to ride bikes, and we combined it into this design for people, kids to ride bikes, and teenagers to have skateboards. I mean, I guess my only uh, recommendation would be, being that you know, it was three, four years ago since we have done one, you know, not, not saying to get a delay the skateboard park, but it would probably be in the committee's best interest 
that you know the pool is going to be opening here you know sooner than we think but you know maybe get that plan out and about so everybody can see it again you know if that's maybe stage it at the pool house and then maybe get some feedback this summer on the individuals that come on what would you like to see next or something like that you know and, and people might say hey i want the basketball court i want the tent it, and just you know maybe put out that master plan that was voted on yeah. and then say you know hey, what would you like to see next you can put a little yeah. box there so people can write what they want to see next. in the master plan that was approved by the select board in 2013 there is no basketball court but we have listened yep. to voters or people say coming to our meetings and saying different things but in the original Plan, and I can show you the original plan. There's no basketball court. Mm -hmm. um, no, I'm just saying because. Yeah. But and the high because school time, is no longer we, the high school, right? So now that's yeah. the elementary school. Right. So you could put and, it there with a little box yeah, and have yeah. people write a note. And we do. Yeah. We, and we'll, we can have it at the table or something. Yeah. Is there still an outdoor basketball hoop at the school? And, yes, at the there is. School? Yeah, there's one. Yeah, there's one. Yeah, there's one. Yeah. Yeah. And there is still one there. And kids yeah. have basketball for nine months of the year. Yeah. And the, they're mm -hmm. playing basketball. So that wasn't the top priority when we made up the master plan because we knew their kids play basketball for nine months of the year. You know, I would just say, as a committee, regardless of what your committee right. is, right. you want to get the input from people sure. as often as you can. Right. And being that it's been some time, it, yeah. there's no reason why we can't. Well, one, you can get the information out in front of the people again mm -hmm. on this is the plan you voted on four years ago. And, oh, by the way, what would you like to see next, you know, type thing. And yeah. That way, that, because you would think that, you know, the committee is going to want to know what to go next, right? I mean, once this, let's say the skateboard park is being constructed, I mean, you're going to want to get going on the next phase of it. Right. Right. And you're going to want input on what that next phase should be or what people want to see. Um, you know, and, and you know, there's a different group of kids in the school now because you have Royalton coming over to do middle school, so there's a different flow of kids. People have moved in and out of town. You know, there's, you know, and, and skateboarding to get. Is, a, is a fad. It's becoming a fad. Skateboarding is going to be uh, an item in the Summer Olympics this summer. You know, they're having BMX, BMX too. They're 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 having the Summer Olympics this year, and, and that's going to be an item in, in the Olympics for the first time. So it's, it's becoming um, uh, uh, kids. I have, I have two students of mine that are five years old, and they got a skateboard for their birthday. I've got six kids, and over the next 15 years, they'll be using this. So anything further in regards to the skateboard park this evening? So we're just going to table it again and make an agenda item for March 10th. So well, we'll unless answers. anybody wants to move forward the way it is currently. Um, I can't vote yes until I see more information. Okay. I agree with you. So we'll get the information in regards to what, okay. what it may cost Sorry. us to um, okay. properly do the subgrade underneath the slab. Okay. Um, I'll give us some time to get some quotes and then figure out what could be in kind versus what would have to, you yeah. know, be charged in, out. Isn't the top foot of this Michael's spec anyway? Can you specify 12 inches of stone? The top of it is, what they dug out was like 12 inches of so, soil. So if we're digging four feet down, yes. and one feet foot is Michael's spec stone, we only need three feet of the fill. Right. Is that Sound right for what he sent us in his quotes. Yeah. Yep. Because, um, but, oh, okay, so he was going to put in a foot of stone, you're saying. It's, okay. it's part of the, the skateboard, skateboard bid. Okay, I'll make a note. So, just to make sure we're not like. Right, so I just need three feet of stone from the night in my quote. Okay. Three foot of stone, um, Parker installing. But, uh, it may even be something the town could install. Okay. I think he was 
Did he say what it was in there? It just said stolen. About, was it 9K? It was just one, but it was just one. He didn't. He didn't give us a dimension of the stone. I don't think he just said stone. I'll have to look. I don't know. He gave me a quote of nine thousand. No, that's not what I'm asking. Size of the stone. Oh, I don't. Maybe. maybe I'll look at his thing. Okay, I'll look in there. But it's gonna change. I mean, there was nothing in that on the uh, size stone that he was putting in. Yeah, I didn't think it said a size, but I'll well, it all changes now because before anyway, so you're going to put a foot at... of stone in, then you probably would use three quarter. But if you're going to put in four feet of stone, you're going to use yeah. bigger stone, so it's going to be probably two so inches minus. So it would reduce Parker's now. estimate, is what Shane is saying, is if we put the four feet of stone in, it would reduce Parker's estimate because. Right. So we'll be um, tabling this until what meeting? The tenth. The tenth. I think it's the tenth. They I was looking at the calendar. My calendar March says 10th, I think. Okay, I was just checking here. Just double check. Um, Therese won't be here. No. I will be here. The 10th is a Tuesday. All right, it's nine. Nine. March 9th. I'm sorry, you know why? Because it starts over here. That looks a little funky. Oh, okay, so we'll table that March for the 9th. Yep. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion or any questions in regards to that? All right. So I'll get the estimate and then just shoot them to you guys. We have yeah. I'll call two people. Thank you. We appreciate your patience and all right, and then um, kind of related item here we have um, coin drop request for the rep committee. So they're looking at doing it for July eleventh, which yes. is a Saturday from eight is it is that eight or nine? Nine nine, nine to noon. Nine. So I did, um, I did double check with VLCT so you would fall under our insurance. However, there are specific rules that you were given. Yeah. So yeah. do you have a plan to borrow signage and yeah, or vests and all that? Yeah, I thought I would um, either historical society or the fire department. They're doing, I thought I would um, watch what they did that when they did their historical society they did it at the beginning. Maybe they'll let, the historical society might let you borrow their signs. Yes. Okay, just so you're, but you you got the list, right? Yeah. Okay, okay, perfect. But you are covered under our insurance. Okay. So I did double check that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Very much. Well, and, uh, and we have we have the date and the white church for April twenty fourth for a big dance So if everybody's good with the coin drop that, um, that fits into the schedule and stuff that's yep, available Kelly, for yeah, coin Kelly drops. Come, yeah. So I'd entertain a motion to allow the Bethel Recreation Committee to establish a coin drop for July 11th from nine to noon and to allow, looks like myself to sign it. So moved. Second. Okay, all in yes. favor? Aye. 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 Do you have the original one? And, then, and this is point of reference for so the, the money for uh, fundraising for the skateboard. We just want to make sure that's on the application. Yeah, if, if not, I mean, I will know, but that's just. Did I'll I make eat it. it? I didn't do it. Kelly must have ripped it off <laughs> when she put that was up. Yeah, I, I will just put a little note on here. Just, All right. Money to go to sleep. Skateboard. Anything further on the coin drop? Good. Moving on, public record inspection, copying, and transmission policy. All right, so <clears throat> this is the one, right, Paul? Yep. All right, and uh, so we got a draft. VLCT does a great job at doing all their model policies, and so I had got, got the uh, model policy and then gave it to Dietrich and um, and Pam to sit down and go over. And actually it was a really good exercise because there were some questions that Pam had and Deidre, and so I was able to explain a couple things to them. And so it was actually a good idea. And um, so I think it's pretty clear on, clear as mud in some cases, public records can be a little tricky. Because in some cases, you know, you would not, 
you would want your lawyer to review it first, just because maybe it's your email. Well, it's not all your email, and some of it may be not for public record. I mean, 99.9% .9 of what we do is all for public consumption, but there's certain times, depending on what the ask was, that you would you know, have to have it reviewed. But, mm -hmm. um, but I think that VLCT does a good job, and um, Dietrich and Pam met a few times and went over it. And what do we current do, currently do? Like, there's no policy in place right now. And, um, Depends on the day. There's a statute, obviously. I mean, I get public record requests frequently from like um, this one software company, for example. Every quarter, I know I'm going to get this request, and I release them basically a document that shows all their um, checks and who we wrote them to, et cetera, and mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. So sometimes you get it, and it's pretty easy, some of the public record requests. If you want a copy of minutes, or you want a copy of this or that, it's, Usually not a big deal, but I have had in the past, in the last 15 years, when you have big ones and they want to know all sorts of big payroll dump information and obviously not, um, you know, uh, social security numbers, birth dates, but a lot of information. So does there's times the, when you've consulted an attorney to be, hey, you know, is this, does the or statute, the Secretary of State. Does the statute allow us to charge for information? Or? It does, and that's outlined in here. It lets you know a lot of, when you review if you have, don't have a fee schedule, then it goes back to the statute. Really, it's just the cost. So you have to figure out, okay, if there's 500 sheets and a ream of paper and how much ink and which was, you know, so you can't gouge people because that was a problem for a while. People wanted electronic record or maybe a copy of body cam footage and people are charging like 50 bucks. Well, it didn't really cost you 50 bucks to make it. So there was a little, some caveat thrown in there for that. I just went and got two certified birth certificates today and I'm thinking, how did they come up with this fee? <laughs> well, that is the state of Vermont. They set those. Because it took the lady maybe five minutes to do it and yeah. they charged me $60 for yeah. two. And I'm thinking, hmm, yeah. really? Is that the new fee? I wasn't sure. I don't know. That was the fee in Claremont, New Hampshire. Yeah. It, oh, New Hampshire maybe did. In Vermont, it uh, used to be $10 yeah. and I think it may have just gone to 15 but I, I'm not sure. I'd have to double yeah. check with Pam. But for vital records, and you know, you keep that in mind is that when you're now you print them off the computer software before you make a copy onto this paper that was really like less than 10 cents a sheet. So, <laughs> and it was time. But the state set, the state set certain clerk fees at a specific price, yeah. like okay. recording a deed, a plat, et cetera, vital records and all that. But I didn't know if anybody had any questions or concerns, typos, mistakes, or anything like that. No, I didn't have any questions. I think it's good that we have a policy in place. And I mean, it's not like we were freewheeling it. I mean, there is a statute. Right. So, but, but still, this is better. It's mm -hmm. clarified. You want, a, you want what? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> and it is if you have to create a record, which means you're taking several documents to make one. That becomes a pain. Right. So. <clears throat> So you're good, Paul? Yeah. All right. Good. I was like, we're doing this. Paul wants well, it. We're making actually, it happen. It reminds me, it was last year at the, at the spring summer select board thing that this, this came up. Yep. So See? It's good. We're not right on it. Clear as mud. <laughs> right. Well, you know, because when you're waiting the statutes and quoting this, but it was nice because you did have to take into consideration. I think she had some um, forms behind it, which are good because, you know, if, if it's a lawyer who's coming to research all the time, you can't really burden them or yourself with too many forms. But I thought they did a nice job. All right. Does anybody want to make a motion to accept the public record inspection, copying, and transmission policy for the town of Bethel. Okay. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And here's the... That's smart. It's a feature. You better put me a good one without the word draft on it in case they go for it. I said I need to make sure. Last time I forgot and I only had one with a draft on it for a prior policy.
And next on the sheet, we had the appointment of Lauren Elmore to the Energy Committee. So I gave you guys a note that I, we just received today that wasn't in your packet. So she did write you a very nice letter um, that I put on your space because we, Kelly gave it to me right before she walked out the door. Okay. Sounds like she experienced, she likes it. And as you know, you have people looking for, committees looking for people. Move to a point. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. That's right. See, I, I think last I checked that the Energy Committee had quite a bit of members They're on it. They're doing well, I think. They had a couple of people, and I think you reappointed some, and conservation is doing great. And so we, actually, we, we might have a couple new Planning like Commission members, huh, Mr. Marshall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we actually <laughs> invited a bunch of people, but, and we had four people come, and I'm hoping three of them, I'm cutting Doug off, but I'm hoping three of them will come back. Doug was there going, why am I here? But God yeah. bless him. But his wife was there, and she might be interested. So we had three. We had four people come and we're hoping, I'm hoping that we can get you on a committee right now if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Motion to accept. <laughs> Doug Marshall to the recreation committee. Oh, yeah, I heard him say you were right in here. I just want to say I talked to Mr. Marshall last week. He was very excited about the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> all the planning committee. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but did you just retire you of all this free time? Right. That's right. Yeah. Free time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we had uh, two liquor licenses. Yep. I get one in my and hand original. One. You get the other one, right? Okay. So we have a Champlain Farm second class liquor license. And then we have one for. What? I thought he was third branch. What is he? First branch. Is the first Sanborn. Sanborn. No, I know. What? Or, is what? it just one? I haven't seen his. Sanborn's just, just for him. Yeah. Yeah, it's the second. Same thing as second yeah. class. He's selling wine, so it's going to be great. Right? Yeah. Wine and beer is second class. Yeah. I don't know if we've done um, motions on these before or we've just signed them. Well, we've been having to do motions. Just It's nice to have them in the minutes because the liquor control board that you know if somebody comes in we can say exactly when we approved it so that when Pam sends the license to DLC if there's any sort of thing later it's nice to have them in the minutes just for clarification as to when you approved it. What's the name of the sandwich shop or is it? Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, Sanborn Enterprises. It's Sanborn it's Enterprises. It's probably a DBA. Do you need separate motions? Sure. However you choose. Get you two on the record. Linda. I'd move to approve the Champlain Farm second class liquor license. So move a second. <laughs> <laughs> Stealing your thunder. <laughs> Trying to one up you. Yeah. See. <laughs> All in favor? Agree. All right. All right. Remember, remember, Paul, we're signing this in the approved section this time. Yeah, I'm going to let Bo take a second motion. <laughs> to accept Sanborn Enterprise liquor license. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Both of us. Okay. Approved. Approved, yes. Yeah. Paul tried to pull a fast one last time. He seconded it and then he <laughs> didn't then he did, then he disproved it. <laughs> He's sneaky, you gotta watch him. Wait, what do we do? Then we have the oh. USDA Rural Business Development Grant. I guess you're looking for a motion to have to, yes. have me sign this. Yes. The um, this is for the seventy-five hundred dollars that we're looking for to do the um, advertisement for the businesses while um, oh. we we're in construction. It's going to be tricky because we're going to get the money a little bit later. So. Um, once the project starts, but okay. we're working on it. Give the original on that. 
I do, right here. Authorizing the chair to sign. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Is it a contract? What is it you're signing? It's, it's a, the grant. It's application. a resolution that basically is just saying that they, at a duly warm meeting uh, with an affirmative vote, um, said that the that the resolution has not been rescinded or amended and that I'm authorized to submit the application, sign all the forms for the 7,500 bucks. This is actually a form of a vote of five. Yeah. No, I did technically vote. I know, well, you got to say that I'm not going to like it otherwise. <laughs> oh, well, notary. I'm a notary. Well, it doesn't have to be. One person could have sustained. That's true. Well, we'll just put that there. You yeah, don't know that. <laughs> don't want to freak anybody out. All right, town manager's report. So, um, I'd like to say this earlier, when Lucian Hinkle was here, he's been kind enough to offer to assist me with the town garage project, and he's going to, once we get the RFPs out, he'll help me review stuff for the soil borings. I explained the situation, what was going on up there, and he was kind enough, apparently he'd done that for someone else before, so it was very sweet of him to offer, and I took him up on it, for sure. So, um... Let's see, a lot of this was stuff that we did tonight. The water line project's out to bid. Water line project is out to bid, so it's moving along. We'll what's be opening. The, uh, what's the opening date? Um, it is no, March 19th. 19th? March 19th, I think. It's like 18th or 19th is opening bid. I don't okay. care, but Tim is going to open them. So at that following meeting, which is March 24th, I'll just be asking the board to authorize me to award the contract to basically whomever the engineer that way we stay or, or maybe even have myself and another person like Chris Jarvis, Tim Mills, look at it. Because um, we're gonna be needing to do that before the next meeting in April. So there's gonna be a little bit of time. But that's what the thing you pay them for is to make sure they're gonna go through all the bids, make sure nothing's missing, all that. So that's out to bid. Um, I just put out the hydraulic study for Pinello Bridge. So that's out after meeting with FEMA and the state to see what they would accept so we can mm -hmm. keep the cost down. So that's out to bid, and um, like you said, we finished the final measurements for and photos for FEMA. So we have, let's see, Jessica just reviewing one last project, and then they'll be going all out for peer review. So that will be good. Um, and let's see, what else? Is, all sorts of stuff. So, so the summer looks like we're going to have a busy construction season for the summer. So we're going to be having the $2.8 million, the water line, which is going to go from basically the feeds down towards the parsonage near Bethel Mills. Um, Peavine slide, that will be out. I uh, got an email today from John Ashley at Dubois and King. They're putting up some finishing touches. <coughs> that project will go out to bid. Then we will be also doing, uh, you know, some other graffiti under the bridge that will be moved, but as far as other construction projects, we'll also be putting in the final Pinello bridge. So um, someone has moved into the house, so we're going to have to leave the temporary bridge up, and then, but there's enough room to leave the temporary, we'll put the permanent bridge in. So that will also be happening this summer. Um, I've also have waded through all of the pit details for Placey's pit, um, found the plans that Bruno and Associates had done, the survey. So it looks like um, they are out of business now, so I'm gonna get another surveyor to come in in the spring and just shoot the grades to see what's where we're at with that. I'm hoping that I'm gonna find the really big piles of uh, topsoil there so that I can cover the pit with materials over there per the Act 250 permit. So we're gonna see how that goes. That pit, technically, we have two years to close it, so we're gonna have someone come in and shoot the grades, see what we need to do, how much of that we can do in-house. But basically, um, my plan is to not take any more material out of there. Uh, the cost is prohibitive, giving them $5 a yard, us doing all the work, 350 to crush it, ridiculous. I could have it delivered for 11 and keep the guys busy doing something else. So 
we're just gonna close that thing and get out of there. Um, you know, most people making probably a buck or two, not five bucks a yard. So we'll know, I will know more about that once the snow melts and I can see what we actually have down there. But I've read all that to 50 permit, talked to Jeff Gilman a little bit, see if he's interested, but it's very specific about that pit. That material is supposed to be crushed to go directly to a project, can be stored for a little bit at the town garage, but there's a lot of time frames, a lot of caveats on that on that um, permit. It cannot be open commercially and um, a really small window. So I think the best interest to us is to close it and get out of it. And frankly, we never should have got into it, not at that price. I mean, it doesn't save you any money, it costs you money by the time you did that 250 and everything else. So so we'll be pretty active outside. That's you know projects that we're gonna be getting done. Some of those, uh, the pit hopefully can be closed by the road crew, but it's gonna depend on what it is and what we need for um, what we need for equipment to close it. Large poles. Yeah, Very then, large. We're, then we're mm -hmm. gonna end up bringing somebody else in. So it may end up having to get a price, do some of it maybe this year and some next. It really depends what we're gonna find there and how much of it actually was touched. So, um, but obviously Peavine goes out to bid, Pinello goes out to bid, those are FEMA projects. Um, the water line goes out, but then there's a list of um, work for the road crew to be doing um, this summer for um, other issues, obviously grading, some roads that need to be built up. That's one of the reasons that we budgeted some extra gravel this year. Some things we found for sure over um, last summer going through all the FEMA work and seeing that. So, yeah, cutting some brush. Yeah, definitely. Well, there was some stuff taken down last year while they were doing tree trimming. So they're going to be going out this year. They've got a nice chipper. They're going to be out doing that and chipping up some of that stuff that's in the woods, just chipping into the woods or whatever. So, um, doing the soil borings at the town garage so that we can see what we're dealing with there. And then we'll start the process there, putting out an RFP um, to get an architect to come in. And, you know, we're going to need an architect to do some of that to, um, just to get us through the permitting process. Um, obviously focusing on it will be a metal building and we're talking about changing the location of the building a little bit, but that becomes a trick because on one side of it, if you're looking at it, on the right is a septic system and on the left there's another um, holding tank, but we may be able to go on that side because you're gonna need a full on um, oil water separator just to come up to code now. So it's probably okay if we take that out. I don't really want to touch the septic system unless we have to. So, um, but besides having it pumped this year. What so. about that tree removal at Cherry Hill? You got that on your list? Tree removal at Cherry Hill. He did it. Uh, oh, he's gone. That, Cecil. that tree's still there. What's one that I thought nope. Cecil had it removed? Nope, it's still there. All right, well, I'll talk to Cecil. It was there when I on my way down tonight. Oh, all right, well, I'll talk to Cecil. Maybe we get a different it's one. A big tree. Yeah, because he, he and I talked about it last year and I thought he had it taken care of. But you know what? There's money in the budget for bigger trees that the road crew can't take down. So, But I'll make a note to ask Cecil about it because um, he was in last year and we discussed that. And I said, you want me to get a couple estimates? He said, no, I will. And then he did. And I guess I just assumed since he never came back that he took care of it. So Cecil, um, Cherry Hill Tree. And he knows which one it is? Uh, if you're up at the, where the flag is, you can see it. Okay, up at the flag. Laying right out under the where I drive down to see my folks. Oh, okay. All right, so I'll ask Nothing him about walking that. Walking hurts me. <laughs> well, I'll ask him about it anyways, but now that we have the budget passed at town meeting, there's money in there for bigger tree removal. Anyways, uh, we also just thank Derek Aldrigetti. He helped the road crew the other day remove a tree um, that a resident had come in and was concerned about. It was a really big one. It was, um, so he came in and actually did that. Uh, at no charge and assisted the road crew and took that down for us. So that was very nice of them. So it will be a busy, busy, busy summer outside, which will be good, get some stuff done. So. Oh, listen to you, wow, yeah. Ain't that an old Vermont, isn't that nice? Listen, rain, sleet, or hail, it's happening. <laughs> we'll just be working in the mud. Cause that water line's going in no matter what, Mo. So, um, my mother used to say, You ain't made of sugar, you ain't gonna melt. Yeah, that's right. So, the only other thing I had was actually a question for the board. I was speaking with someone today, uh, this is regarding water bills. So, I'm not sure currently 
if I have a resident who might make a deal with them, you know, just charge them interest, but not the penalty, especially if they're making a payment plan and they're paying on a regular basis and they're trying to catch up, you know, we'll make these agreements with people. Um, but I'm curious about if the board would allow us, which is something we don't normally do, is not to charge interest <clears throat> and penalty to seniors on payment plans um, for water sewer that are on fixed income or social security. That was a question I had an issue today. I have a lady who's um, making a payment plan and she's each month, but because she's, you know, always, she's behind because she, you know, pays per month. And so we don't charge her penalty, but she still is getting interest charges and she's on a fixed income. And so I'm not sure how the board feels about that. I usually, I just went, use penalty as a carrot to say you know what if you can make this payment we won't charge penalty but you'll have to pay interest and kind of do that but when you have someone who is you know staying had making regular payments I was a it's hard to know you know I mean we don't there's not a lot of opportunity that we have to assist seniors on Social Security or on fixed income and this topic came up today with someone who is you know making regular payments and she's not behind she just kind of breaks it down so she you know so she's you know, like a month behind so it's not a big deal in the sense that she doesn't have some huge balance because she doesn't um, she just likes to do all of her payments in a budget that way because she is on a fixed income she can a lot for that so you know I don't know I, I told her I would have to talk to the select board and you know we've kind of had a little bit of leeway in the past with penalty and things just to make deals with people so that they can pay and, you know, get them caught up, but I wasn't sure how you felt about, do you want to just leave it on a case by case basis? Do you feel to leave it up to our, my discretion? Or do you feel like you want to have a set, you know, policy on something like that? Um, maybe allow us a little time to yeah, think about talk it. it over and think about it. Yeah. yeah. My initial inclination is not to just set a policy, but yeah. maybe to Gauge it case by case. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, puts a little more onus on you, but you're you're already doing a lot of that legwork. I yeah, just, I think we set a policy that <coughs> yeah. people can take advantage yeah. of that. Very and and the, it is, and it's hard too to know. You know, I mean, fixed income for me is social security, or you know, having a limited income, and and um, so you know, it came up today, and uh, I was dealing with someone. Obviously, she was you know she was upset because here she is trying and she's doing nice job, make a payments, and then, you know, I'm billing her penalty, or not the penalty, but the interest, and, you know, it's hard, because, yes, I know what the power company would do, and this and that, but, you know, we're also collecting taxes, and, I don't know, you're just trying to be, uh, We're also giving young people who are buying properties to make money uh, a free ride for six, eight, nine months. Yeah, which, which helps that. your grand list in the end because if they in bring the up end. the value of the property, then it raises the grand list. So I know it. It's kind of one of these things, isn't it? But you I think could, there's a pro and you just con gave there. that one person, you could probably give this lady the rest of her life. Right, yeah, exactly. It's hard. There's pros and cons. You're always trying to find the sweet spot. And um, But anyways, it's something we think about. I can put it on another um, agenda. But. but then you get another month of interest for the lady. And you know, the topic just came up today, so I just wondered, so. That was it, unless you have any questions for me. <clears throat> the only question I had was, well, looking through the budget status report, this wasn't on our end. It looked like ours was shaping up pretty decently. Um, but looking through the solid waste department, Looks like they have some overages going on there with labor, retirement, yep. um, hazardous waste and recycling fees. I also should think that they're, they're probably... And a this, couple of pieces of equipment. And this might be behind, maybe is a little bit behind on their fees, I'm not sure, because usually when their bank statement comes versus when this comes, that may be a little behind by a couple of weeks, but I'm on their fees under their revenues, but I don't want to swear to it. But yeah, labor, FICA, Medi, retirement, uh, health insurance, all that for them is going to be up because the facility manager that retired, Chet Brown, when he retired, uh, Jen had come on earlier 
um, part time and then full time. So you had overlap of a good month. Plus, um, you had Chet's payout because he was one of the final people. I think we have two left that um, had a, a significant amount of sick time or vacation time that were getting paid out. So this budget is going to become tight right there. Um, I, and I've spoken to the couple of members, anyways. The BRTS board talked about you know probably going to have to look at uh, they're going to have to look at bag fees, etc. Well, they probably ought to be looking at whatever they can do between now and June 30th. Oh, sure. Month. You know, if that's, uh, you know, limit overtime, or, you know, anything like that, to, you know, because your labor is already over 10% and your retirement's over by 25%. Well, and I will course. say that that one, the retirement was not... You're not going to be able to do anything about the retirement no, at this No, no, I mean, it wasn't budgeted right in the first right. place. So right. we are going to take another stab at the <clears throat> solid waste budget that's in the town report. I mean, they need to look at it again because we just found out, like since the new manager came on, there's a couple mistakes that enough money wasn't budgeted, yeah. period. But, just, but no, you're sorry. right, there's definitely, there's gonna be equipment maintenance and Rome wasn't built, and you can't fix all. Handwrite the ship, as Chris says, in one ship, which he's right. I mean, hopefully there's some efficiencies coming out of, yeah, that might help well, the, offset some the, of the, the extra costs, but. The equipment's gonna be more because uh, we've owned them four years, three years. There hasn't been a no service done at all. At all, nothing. So we've had no track up there uh, correcting, you know, doing the service work and mm -hmm. any warranty work that's available to, to, to cut costs. Mm -hmm. There was no no service done for three years. No. And she had a couple breakdowns too. Um, right. Yeah, so she had to bring somebody in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, but other than that, everything else looked good from what I saw. Mm -hmm. Alan and I went over his budget the other day. He was a little nervous about a couple things, so we just talked about it. Keep an eye on some things that he could, um, where he was going to find some savings. So he and I did talk. Yeah, about I think he's it. probably pretty much got all his materials all purchased for the remainder of the winter. Yeah. Um, yeah. He just he just barely got some salt. That bill may not be in here, but um, I think is what he told me. But um, we're, we're only at sixty percent, right? Yeah, and I also um, just billed the constable in the fire department for the diesel, so his is a little high, but that'll, there's some money that'll be coming because we just billed them for any of their gas and diesel. But he did look at a couple things that he was, you know, he's over on sand, and um, but he knew we had a good savings in salt, so. All right. We had the select board meeting minutes from the 10th. Yeah for something else to ask her about. Um, the letter from Mary. Yeah. Is, is that just a lot of uh, wordsmithing? The one she just, uh, yeah, we'll have to, I mean, I just no, got a it. A lot of that, just changing the wording and some stuff. Yeah. Some of it. And you could take that into consideration if it passes, you could look at that again because that thing, policy is still in draft. But yeah, she was kind of her to yeah. spend some time to say. Yeah, it was definitely thorough. Thorough. Yeah, absolutely. She should have came to our. Yeah, I know. Our she meetings. said, and I think she says that. She, she said, said that. I'm sorry, basically, that she hadn't. But it was nice of her to go through it. She did good work. So those are concerns you could look at when you go to pass the ordinance, or, or depending on the vote, excuse me, in town meeting. So the uh, select board meeting minutes, anybody have any issues with? The way they're written, or are we good to make a motion to approve the minutes for February 10th? So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Other communications, we had uh, <coughs> the comments there on the, mm -hmm. on the ordinance hand. Yeah. Rec minutes, conservation commission minutes, nothing from the constable. Um, Solid waste board. business to come before the board big audience out there
right, so I'll uh, entertain a motion to enter executive session to discuss the employment or evaluation of an employee. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Um, I'd just like to ask that you...